morning, Michelle. All right, court will call State of Wisconsin versus Jesse Kraszewski, case number 21, CF885. May I have the appearances, please. Abby Nikolai, Randy Sitzberger, and JJ Crawford for the state. Donna Kukler, Popple, Gail Vies appear with Ms. Kraszewski. Good morning. Before we bring in the jury today and continue with the testimony of Detective Hoppy, I do want to address the motion filed last week by the defense. I'm aware that there's a motion that was also filed by the state. I haven't had an opportunity to review that yet, um, so I'm not going to address that one right now, uh, but at least wanted to address the one filed by the defense, which was uh, to add two witnesses to the witness list. Who will address this for the state? I will, Your Honor. All right, um, Attorney Kukler, anything you want to add? Um, I don't have the luxury of having the investigative reports. I believe they were turned over to the defense or to the state because that was referenced at the end of the day when they referenced getting it. Um, but based on my reading of your motion, it appears these would be relatively short witnesses and they're both local. That's right. All right. And anything else you want to add? No. Motion right. speaks for itself. From the state? We would object. This is well past the June deadline this court gave for disclosing witnesses. These aren't witnesses that were per se unknown prior to that June. That is, their testimony isn't relevant to something that's come up in trial that would have caused the defense to suddenly look for them. This is all related to the EMT care of Lynn Hernan back in October of 2018. The brief summary of any testimony they might give, I think is just cumulative to what we've already heard. That being that in Ms. Krzyzewski's own interview, she talks about the plate already being to the side of Ms. Hernan. As best these two EMTs can remember, they didn't move anything, and I think they talk in generalities in their statement to the investigator that they generally try not to disturb a body or the scene for a DOA or dead on arrival type case, such that I don't think they have anything that, that isn't already in evidence and can be argued. And again, this is a very late disclosure. We're at the last witness of the state's case when these two witnesses were disclosed. Um, so I would object. Did the state otherwise know of these witnesses from previous reports? No, I don't believe we had their individual names. And I, in looking through our discovery, which is obviously voluminous, so there's a chance I just possibly missed an EMT report, but I did not see any EMT reports or names of the EMTs in our copy of discovery. Well, that's not true because we got the EMS reports through discovery and from the state. So. Pewaukee Fire Department reports with names is, was in the discovery. All right, based upon the nature of this case, the fact that the state has not rested, these appear to be relatively short witnesses, and there does not appear to be any surprise to the state, I am going to allow the defense to add them to the witness list. All right. Then anything else? Uh, I'll deal with that other motion later after the defense has an opportunity to address it, maybe um, at the close of the state's case. Nothing from the state. Thank All you. right. Anything else from the defense then? No, not, not at this moment. Okay. Then very well. Let's have the jury brought out. Poppy, come on back up. Yes, thank you. I'll swear you in, or well, Teresa will swear you in again.
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Good morning. Good morning. Detective Hoppy, if you would stay standing and then raise your right hand since it's a new day. Madam Clerk will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Still help with that? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right, then, just for the record for Madam Reporter, state your name, please. Aaron, A A R O N, Hoppy, H O P P E. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. You may continue with your examination of Detective Hoppy. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, Detective. Good morning. Um, before we jump in for the day, I want to ask you, uh, do you recall last week when we went through some text messages in Exhibit 186 that were from May of 2018? Yes. And do you recall that uh, you even circled a page of those and we entered that as 186A as an exhibit? Yes. Do you remember what word you circled on that? It was the, that was May of 2018. Right. I, I, I'll be honest, I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> um, the only reason I'm asking is because I think we forgot to add something to our um, to our timeline there. So on 228, uh, exhibit before you there's a spot for May at the top of the exhibit is that true yes and um, if I showed you exhibit 186 and just had you flip through there uh, it was it was definitely the longest set of messages that we went through last week um, does that refresh your recollection about what Yes, it does. What you circled on that exhibit? Yes. And what was that? I believe that is when Ms. Krasowski tells Mr. Craig that Ms. Hernan is in a coma. Okay. So could you, do you have the marker in front of you I still? do, Could yes. you please add 2018 next to May and then just put the word coma? Yeah, Thank you. <clears throat> Detective, when we left off on Friday, we were uh, in the middle of Exhibit 204, which is the interview from July 11th, 2019. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. And uh, up to the point where we ended for the weekend, um, do you recall in any of the interviews that we've heard whether Ms. Kraszewski ever told you that Lynn Hernan was drinking Visine on the day she died, on October 3rd of 18. No. You don't remember, or she did not? She did not. Okay. So now I'd like to uh, publish Exhibit 204 again. I believe that we're on slide six at this time. And we did test the audio, so hopefully we'll be ready to go. And before we start, Detective Hoppy, can you just remind the jury why this interview occurred? What prompted it? Uh, Ms. Krasowski uh, requested to meet with investigators. Okay. Uh, so this is, again, a continuation of the interview on July 11th of 19? That's correct. Okay. And for the record, this clip starts at 10.06.29. How about this? And, and, and again, just be straight here. Have you, did you ever use any of Lynn's credit cards, or did you ever apply for a credit card or a loan or anything else after Lynn's death? After she died? Yes. No. Never used her credit card? I might have used her Speedway card like a day or two after because I always had it, and that all of a sudden like it dawned on me. But other than that, no. Okay. So she lets you use her Speedway card? Oh, yeah, all the time. Thing? Yeah. She had me keep it on me because when I would go back and forth or anything, she always had me use it. Always. So just the Speedway card, no other credit card? I didn't apply for card. anything after she died. Everything I did was while she was alive and with her. What about using the card? So, I mean, what? I think just the Speedway. I'm almost positive. Okay. Because she cut up a lot of her credit cards before, like the two weeks before. So I'm almost, I don't remember any other ones left. I mean, I'm not saying they weren't. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking wholeheartedly. I do remember I used the Speedway card. I'm almost positive because I screwed up. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I knew, like, this isn't going to be good. Okay. 
it's time for you to be an honest person. You need to show Scott, the woman he's been with for three and a half years, who watches his kids if the lies are done. Because yeah. my patience is getting done with this. I think, now I don't think, I know, he knows you're involved. Here she is. Look at, look at her. You loved her. Yeah. Right? Well, don't you see? Visine bottles. And she needs a lot of Visine, more than one bottle, to get where the Visine yeah. in her body. Zero. But there's the water bottle. Yeah, I get it. I'll show you a picture of the trash. There's no Visine in the trash. Jesse, you either cleaned up the scene. No, I threw it out three days before. She, I know I threw, it, I threw out all the bottles. It was three days right, before. Right, and you said you didn't buy any more since then. Yeah. So 160 parts of Visine, which is like four to five bottles of Visine, get in her system. Explain it to me. In her water? Without a lie. She drank one bottle of water over three days? <clears throat> no. Then how? Then I gave her water every day. So then where would the Visine have come from? Her waters. So she pre-dosed all the waters? That's what you're going no, with? No, not all of them, no. I didn't say all of them. I said, but she put it, she kept it in her bottle of vodka. She had three bottles of vodka. I didn't touch her drinks. I would like to believe you, but all the lies you've said in this case, and prior to us even getting talking to you, all, all the stuff, all the lies you told Scott, I to your mom, and you know what it looks like? That you're guilty. I didn't. And the jury's going to find you guilty. I did. It's just I, that simple. I understand that. But you say, hey, well, we did all this research on my phone and stuff. You know what it looks like? It looks like you're doing the research. You're buying the gun. I understand that. You know? But I wasn't. I know. But she's not here to tell us what happened. So we have to go on the evidence. But I'm the really, evidence I is phone you. searches. I told and you. And evidence is phone time. records showing like where you're at. And evidence is, is there's no Visine here. There's supposed to be Visine bottles around here. It's supposed to be Visine she bottles in the trash. She didn't drink Visine from the bottle except the first time. So you're talking she pre-dosed all these bottles of water in the kitchen. Not all of them. No. She did it with a few that bottles. That sounds ridiculous. Vodka. No, it isn't, though. I'm telling you the truth. And because she had, she had 15 bottles. ounces of vodka the day before. She was a 0-0 zero, zero when she was found. 0.0 zero zero ethanol. Okay, that was the day before. Though. I get you. I, I, I know what she drank. I saw it plain as day. I poured it. You poured the vodka. Yeah, no, the, the vodka. Drink. You poured it in the water or the vodka. You poured it in the... You gave it to her that morning. I did not. You know. helped her out again. She wanted to die. She was real sick. This is not the person she was. I get that, because she was a hairdresser. Yeah. She cared a lot what she looked like. She looks like a crap here. Yeah, she does. And no one looks good then, but she, this, this person, as a whole person, isn't who she wanted to be, and you helped her. And she helped you out over the last two years with a lot of money. She did. And it was coming to an end. The money was coming down, and it was time for Lynn to move on to a happier place where she wouldn't be miserable. And you helped her. It's that simple. I bought the Visine. You bought it, and you gave it to her. I didn't give it to, I mean, I gave it to her, like, handed it to her, but I didn't give it to her. So you knew she was putting it in there the day up? I didn't know. You were there that morning for four hours. I didn't know she put it in there the day up. The body metabolizes it real quickly. I understand that. So if you're there from 8 until noon, she's taking it at that time. Well, I told you, she was in and out while I was there. Well, she she's constantly keep dosing. She needs to keep drinking to get this in. She didn't drink four bottles in one no, shot. No, she did you know, and not only that, but all these other times, she when you drink Visine at there. the level she's drinking yeah. it, ingesting it, she's going to have massive diarrhea. She's going to be throwing up. There's no puke on her. No. So she no, hasn't had diarrhea. There, there's little puke. pills in her mouth. There's pills all over. There's no pills in her tummy. She doesn't have Someone any diarrhea. Stage. I didn't stage that. I can tell you, you right did. now, I did not stage that. Did your mom? No. Honestly, my opinion is, is I think she drank that water. I don't know what was in it, but I think she drank the water, and I think she went to do the pills next, and I don't think she got very far. That was my honest to God truth. I did not give her rising purposely that day for any reason. I didn't have it with me, and I didn't give it to her. What do you mean purposely? Well, because you guys are thinking, I purposely gave her rising. I didn't do it on purpose. I, I only know, gave her rising. Gave her the way you could have done it, well, I mean, you gave it to her. I bought her it for her. So, I mean, I look at it like the, right there, that's bad. I bought it for her. And you knew what she was going to do with it because she has stuff for her eyes. She drinks stuff. Doing it, and then she has to drink her stuff. For, like I told him, she's been doing this for a while. I didn't. She didn't die from it any other time. So, I didn't think it would happen anytime soon. 
I thought she was just having fun off of it for a while. Thought, okay, it's making her sick. She likes the feeling, or it's putting her to sleep. But you knew that she looked it up, and you knew that she told you she could die from it. Yes. So what do you mean you thought it was just for fun? Because it wasn't ever happening. She wasn't dying from it, so I didn't believe that she would. I thought she was going to go on to her next scenario. Whatever that may be, I don't know. Like all the other ones she'd come up with for a little bit. She had a boatload of visine in her. A boatload. And you told me to just throw the bottles away three yeah. days prior. You didn't buy her any no. prior to that. So where'd it come from? Where are the bottles? Those where, where bottles, bottles, though, she emptied into things. That's what she always did well, when I, I mean, wasn't that, there. So then, if you're in a jury and someone yeah. says, this person, she pre-dosed all these bottles of water and then resealed them, and then she'd tell you, Jesse, take some from the left or take some from the right, that sounds ridiculous. I don't know what you want me to say because that's the truth, though. She always, every time I bring up, think Scott would buy that? Would, would buy them? Would, would think Scott would buy that story? I, I think you tell you're lying again. I'm not lying, though. I told you, I've been honest with you since yesterday when I saw you guys. Everything I've been telling you, I've been coming out with everything. Well, it's time to finish 100% truth. No more lying. I'm right. not. Because I, no I, I know, I know, I know that. And I've been saying that from day one. I know what she was putting in things. I don't know how much because she didn't do it when I was there. She drank that vodka and she told me after she drank about half of it what she did. Yeah, I and, didn't know. And it metabolizes in eight hours. So if you left at 10 o'clock, worst case yeah. scenario, by 6 a.m., all that glycine's out of her system. I understand that. And you get there and she's coherent. Yeah. Like she's talking to you. She says, goodbye, see you later, yeah. darling, or whatever yeah. she said. Right? Yep. Yeah. So but she also time, had a bottle... Two bottles on her when I left that night. Usually I would give her two. And then that morning I gave her another bottle. Both those other two bottles were gone when I got there. And then she had the, I didn't thought it was two, but there was the one sitting there. Usually she got one or two for me, depending on. Okay. We don't see our vice. I under, I get what you're saying. I can't tell you anything differently because there is no vice there. I understand that. I don't see it either. She wasn't drinking visine from the bottle, though. I, I don't know how else to explain that because she wasn't doing it. She did it one time. If that's what she was doing, I would tell you. I would have left it sitting there if I took something away. I didn't. I didn't touch anything around her. Nothing. I didn't even want all the pills laying around her that she shouldn't have had, and I didn't touch those because I didn't want to take anything away because I knew exactly what it was. In general, it's a dead person. You don't touch shit. I did not give her any advising that day. None. I didn't put it in anything. I didn't give it to her. I put visine in her drink one time that I told him about. One time. And that was in front of her and she got mad because I only put two drops in it. So she grabbed it from me. She put the visine in what she wanted when I wasn't <laughs> around for a reason. Because she knew I did not. And I get that, but dead people don't dispose of bottles. I told you what I did with the bottles. I'm not lying. Three so days before. She goes three days prior. She has this plan set up. I don't. Maybe she didn't have all the bottles, or maybe she put them in certain bottles. I don't know. Okay. So, but there, there's not a lot of water bottles around her. There's one. Yeah, I get that. Did she put four bottles of Visine into one water bottle. Um, it? she's done it. She has done it. Yeah. What? Numerous times. Four full bottles yes. of Visine. I told you I bought her eight to twelve. <coughs> Why would you see her do that? I didn't physically see her do it, but I'd come back and they'd all be empty. <coughs> she wasn't putting them into 20 different bottles. There's no way. You're, it doesn't match the science. How does it? I don't know what more to tell. I told you I'd come in and she'd have all the bottles <coughs> all up together. She's not taking one bottle at a time and drinking it. Morning. No. Three days before is when I emptied out the trash, and that's where all her bottles were. <coughs> I know that's where they were. I didn't take anything away. I swear to God on that. I didn't. That was the last time I removed you anybody from the house. To us, to yourself. Fuck us. Scott, you all heard the truth. I, Amen. Yes. You all heard the truth. Jesse. I'm telling you the truth. But how do we know that? Because for three days now, <laughs> you've been telling us lies. And then you've been telling Scott what, lies. What you've been do you want me to lies. tell you or do? I want to know really what happened that day. I, 
you know what? I'm actually starting to think that maybe Chris is right. That you knew she was trying to harm herself, and you were doing a half-assed job of trying to stop her from doing it. I think part of you maybe actually felt bad and knew that she was sick and wanted it. Maybe that was it, because I don't think you're a stone-cold killer. I don't think you're cold-blooded. I, I don't know. But what I do know is Chris is 100% right when he says the science and the facts aren't adding up. That bottle of water right there had in six, six vitamins. How do you know, How do you know that? that? Because that's what she put in it. When? She told me. The three days before I threw it out. And she asked for it that morning. Did and you gave it to her? Gave it to her. Yeah. So this is the hot shot bottle of water. I did. I gave it to her because she said I wanted it. I didn't realize per se. I knew she told me, okay, I have this one, I have this one, and I have my vodka. And she said, it's the one bottle I have left on the right. Can you please give me that before you leave? And so you I honestly thought, though, like the other times, it wasn't going to kill her. I thought it was going to put her to sleep for a little bit. If you thought this is the big bottle, the one that she, that, the she, one she was told. always She was always putting in four to six in each of them. So I didn't think I There's no way possible. Yes, I swear to God, I never no Because she has 160 parts. 160. I don't know what that means. I'll tell you what it means. 60 parts kills you. So she has about two and a half times the amount you needed. And there's still liquid in this thing. Okay, well, the last time I threw out the bottles, there was nine bottles that I threw out. She told me she put six in one, and she put the rest in her vodka. So that day you leave, she says, give me the bottle with the with yeah. the drops. She had two more the, water who bottles. Put the, who put the visine in the water? I didn't. I swear on that. I didn't. How do you know there's six bottles? That's what she told me. She said I put six in there. And the then other you thought three. it was a good idea to give it to her. Is that what you're going with? No, I didn't think it was a good well, idea. Why did you give it to her? Because I fought with her about it for an not. hour before I left, and I didn't want to keep arguing with her. She was screaming at me before I left. They tell us after 40, so you're watching souls. We were. And when I went to leave, she said, I want that bottle. And I said, you don't need it. I figured it would put her to sleep because she was putting in very large doses from what she told me. She told me numerous times. I, every time she had her visine, she would take about three bottles. And she was putting it in to two waters usually and her vodka. So she was putting in a good three to five, six bottles in each one of them. It was no different than any other time in my mind. That's what she was doing. I, I'm telling you the God's honest truth. I didn't ever put it in there. Ever. She did that behind me. I don't believe it. And Scott's not going to leave you just so you know. He's not going to leave you. He's going to think you're a murderer. I didn't murder her. Detective, in this clip that we just watched, um, was that the first time that you had heard anything about six bottles of Visine in a water bottle? Yes. There's two pieces of paper on the table. What are those? I believe those are scene photos. Okay. Is Do you recall from the scene photos, is there a bottle of water in them? Or a water bottle in the photos? Yes, there is. Okay. So when Ms. Kraszewski said that bottle of water had six Visine in it, do you know what she was referencing? Yes. What was that? The bottle that was next to Ms. Herndon and that at the time it had it contained at least six, bo or six bottles of Visine that she knew was in there. <clears throat> was this the first time that you had ever been told Ms. Kraszewski and Ms. Herndon fought for an hour and a half before Ms. Kraszewski left that day? That was the first time, yes. Moving to slide seven, please. This is about another 15 minute clip. Here's your signature on April 20th. That's not for the estate, though. That's for her living will and lockbox. You didn't see all that paperwork at the same time because they have more pictures. Yeah, I don't know about the, the personal represent or the um, that the will was left to me. I did not know that. No. 
How did you not know that when you signed it, though? I didn't. So who signed this? I signed that. That's not for her will. This is for her living will. will. That's for the hospital. Okay. That's what that means. That I'm access to medical at the hospital and her lockbox. That's all that is. I know because she had me type that up and they went to sign it at BMO Harris. That's not her will. Living will is for medical decisions. That's what a living will is. I did not know if she changed her physical will. No, I did not. My mom didn't even know that. That's her medical. That's right. for the hospital and the lockbox. I did not know anything about she the bill. All, the accounts, all that kind of stuff. You don't yeah. know that you're the personal representative? No, I did not know that. Okay. We thought my mom was. So does my mom. Okay. I didn't kill her for any financial our, gain. Our, or boss, did I kill our her? boss is done with this. He wants us to be done. So this is your opportunity to I'm say, telling you 100%. say what you guys say to make it best for you. You helped her. I helped her. I bought the shit. I didn't put it in. I, I gave her the bottle of water. I did help her. That's as far as I She can, can barely move. How can she do this herself? How can she put those six bottles of She water? was doing that. She physically the was day, doing that. that. The day before. No, it did not happen. It happened two days before. The two days before. Yeah. And how many bottles did you buy? Um... She had a total of like 11. How many did you buy two days before? Three days before. Three days before. Well, I didn't buy them that day, though. I bought them maybe that day. I don't know. I bought them the, around the week. Yeah. How many? Um, 11. 11. Yeah. And where did you get them? Two were the I ones. I don't know for sure. Where do you think you got them? I, I always went all different. It's just wherever I was going for something. So I, it, wasn't, it wasn't like I just went out for eye drops. Did you break them up? Did you buy some here, here, some there, some here? No. Did the court think it was funny when you're buying 11 bottles of eye drops? I mean, did they ever say anything? <laughs> no. Nope. I, I would think it's weird. But I do too. Because my brain's yeah. fucked up, switched it, you know? No. No, never, nobody ever said anything. But I didn't break them up and go yeah, to different you, places. When you break the 11 bottles, the yep. two ones for her eyes, yep. and then the nine for her to adjust, yep. do you give them to her? Do you put them on the counter? What do you do with them? Um, the two for her eyes, I usually put in the bathroom unless she needs one out. That's why I still don't know why there isn't one, because she normally had one out. I don't know if it was on the kitchen or in the bathroom. She usually had one out, and I know that for sure, and I didn't hide it or put it anywhere. Um, and then the other ones, when I left that day, they were sitting on the sink, on the kitchen sink is where I always, the counter, whatever you call it. Okay. And then the morning of her death, you come and... Obviously, no bottles of visine around. No, I got rid of them the day, two days two before. Two days prior. Two, yeah. And you asked her, what did you do with the nine I bottles? Know. No, no I know? asked her the day that I took them. Yeah. What because you when she had the garbage, like, I always take down her bottles. And you asked her, yep. what did you do with nine bottles of visine? That's what I said. I said, did, did you say? take nine bottles of visine? That's what I said to her first. Did so, you take all nine said. bottles? And she said, no. I put some in my vodka and I put some in the water. And I said, wait a minute. You did what and how much? I asked her plain as day because I wanted to know. Because I always asked her. I wanted to know how much she put where. And so she put some in the vodka and some in the water. Yeah. But she didn't know which water. It was the one water on this side. Right side. And you know that because she marked it? She pointed it to you? No. I. You can tell by looking at it. The top of it. Okay. And... Because she had the open watch. bottles and the regular bottles. The chat and she's reasonably happy. And you watch her soaps. And then no, she, said, she was moody and in a bad mood and tired. Because I said before, you said you were watching soaps. We were watching soaps. But she's crappy. Yeah. And tired. And she says, yeah, go get me the bottle on the left, the right. The no, she didn't say anything until I went to leave. Okay. I said, do you need anything before I leave? Like, I always ask. Because you said you're on her own She said, that's fine. Yep. <coughs> and then she says... Um, well, and that's when she said, make sure you take my card because we haven't used it this month, her state, whatever thing. And um, she said, can you get me some bottles of water? And I said, yeah, I'll get you some water. That's why I don't think she really thought either because I always got her water. Why did she ask me to get her water? I don't think she planned on it or thought that was going to happen right away. I'm telling you, she's done it before, so we didn't really see this being any different. Okay, so she... Yes, you get your water. Yep. And then what? Oh, actually, I grabbed two regular bottles of water from just the regular, and I brought them to her, and she said, no, I want my other bottle. 
Which is the one you know has six bottles of ice yeah. in it. Because she told you. And you give it to her. Well, we argued about it. But eventually. How about the argument? Um, I said, I don't think you need to take this right now, and I'm not going to be here. Because normally she would try at least to have it while I was there in case something did happen. I prefer it. She didn't always listen to me. I'm not going to tell you she did. And um, she said, no, I want that bottle of water. It'll put me to sleep. I want to go to sleep. We argued about it for a good five, ten minutes. And I said, no, you don't need to take it. I said, you already had some last night when you had your vodka. And that is exactly how it went. And then you gave in. Yep. And you gave it to her. I always gave in on what she wanted because it's her choice and what she wanted. She wanted... It is her choice. She wanted this, I let her have this. She wanted that, I let her have it. I pretty much did what she wanted of me. Did you see her drink the water? She drank a little bit before I left, like two sips. And then you left? Yep. Were you worried? Oh, extremely. But I also thought, too, she's done it before. I didn't really know. So you know she's putting six bottles you, in a bottle. Why done that before? Six bottles. Yes. Yeah. How many times? I can't say for sure. Certain, maybe three or four. She started off with smaller amounts and went to bigger. Did you ever have to kind of revive her? No. Start a rub? Um, <laughs> sometimes I hit her face, you know, and like smacked her awake. One time I, I was, thought I had to call an ambulance, but I didn't have to. A lot of times she fell asleep and she'd wake up, talk to you for a little bit, fall asleep, wake up. That was pretty much the normal. Are you carrying guilt for what you did? I have a ton of guilt. I also am thinking in my head right now, this is exactly what she said from day one. She always wanted help and she always was worried that it was going to backfire. Because you could have you prevented this. What do you do when somebody you love is done? What do you do? How many times do you say no? How many times do you not do what they want? What I, I'm just being honest. What do you do? How can you look at somebody every day that doesn't want to be here and fights with you about every little thing? And I'm being 100% real with it. What do you do? There's only so much. I, I took her to the hospital. I took her to the hospital. I tried. I'm the one who got her to go. I thought for sure they would help her. They would see something. They would know something. They would do something. I mean, I told them so much without telling them everything. But you didn't tell them about the I did. I told them. You should have told them. Jesse. I told them. She was. She was sick. I told them as much as I could without. Well, you could have told them everything. I know. I know. But my dad's dying. I tell him everything. He's not eating. I did. I told him all this. this. He's doing this. I kept telling him to check her toxicology. I told him over and over again. When when you say that to a nurse, she says, why should we check her toxicology? They just don't say, okay, we'll check it. No, I kept saying, take it. Check it. Because I said, she's doing a lot with her pills. That's what I said. But you, but, but I would have thought you that said, came up. I you said was, what you said was was before was exactly what you needed to. Was, <laughs> what what do you do when someone you love wants to? I didn't do it to her though. I did. Well, J- Jesse, I would at, never at, 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 harm anybody or do I, anything. I, I, she wanted this. I know. I can't help her. I can't. <laughs> you knew what happened. I didn't even charge with murder for something Jesse. I didn't do. <laughs> What do you mean, Jesse? What do you, what do you think was going to happen when you gave her a bottle of water with six bottles of Izzy? I didn't think she was going to die because she's done it before. I'm just telling you that. I know. I know. All she would do was fall asleep and she'd get up a few hours later. But you were worried about her. I was worried. always worried. But did you call her? Yeah, I did call her. Did you check my record? Did you call her that day? I did. Did you call her? I don't know. Maybe once or twice. Did she answer? No. Why didn't you go back then? I did go back. If I, I didn't thought, go back right away, but I figured the... she was sleeping. She was always sleeping when I called. She never answered the phone. You were worried. You were worried enough that something was going to happen, so you were gone for five hours. No, you said I was only gone for like four. Four and a half. Yeah, I said about 12.30. And when I got back, I, do you know how many times I've walked to her house thinking I'd find her done? How many times? 
This has happened a lot. That it wasn't just one time. I didn't think it was going to happen. I wasn't trying to make it happen. I'm, I'm dead serious. I know you guys. You guys are totally are so away from what I was. Well, what, 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 what? And I told. What did I tell you before when Chris was out of the room? I told you before. How are we supposed to do it when every time it's been piecemeal? It's been lies, truths, lies, truths. Because no matter what I say, I feel like it's no. Done. It's yeah. done. Well, like, well, well, how would you? How would you? You know how this all could have been avoided was to tell you was telling that those deputies that but, day. So Lynn was suicidal. Lynn wanted to end her life. And I was supposed to say it, I gave her a Visine bottle of water this morning. Or you say she was drinking Visine. Be give some kind of explanation. Because now here we are. I get, it. I get it. I get what you're saying, but you know, it's. I don't know how to explain it because I've never went through this with anybody. How are you supposed to sit there and watch somebody you love want to do this to themselves? How how do you feel about that? Do you know how messed up I was in the head with did all you, this? Did you want Linda to die though? No. Then why didn't you talk to somebody? Why didn't you tell somebody? Why didn't you tell a healthcare provider? Why I didn't tried you tell when I somebody? took her to the hospital. Why didn't Scott and say, "This is fucking me up, Scott"? Because he, he loves you, for he Christ's sake. Me. He loves me. He should know that I was drinking a ton because I didn't know he, what to think. He, he would have helped you. But I got her to the hospital for... He would have helped you. You know he would have. Probably. You're trying to you're trying to say, oh, I was casually trying to tell the doctor. I wasn't, the doctors what I to look for. Why didn't you tell them, take them aside and say, look... I love her. I think she's. I think she wants to harm herself. I think she wants that's to what, end her life. That's why they put a camera in the room because I did say she was suicidal. I said that. Okay. I just. There's only. I didn't know how much to say. Or, I didn't want to get in trouble either. You have to remember from day one when she always said, "Can you help me? Can you do this? Can you?" She. She. You know what she wanted? She wanted me to pull the trigger. Do you think I could do that? Do you think I could honestly no, do that? No, I can't. I can't. She could have been dead three months ago if I would have helped her. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't physically do that. I get it. I'm a piece of shit. And you guys think whatever. But this is somebody that I cared a shit deal about. And nothing to do with fucking money. She was poor when I met her and we were still friends. She has, she has no pain now. I can't say You don't. I watched my aunt go through pain for 14 years when she was sick. And I couldn't physically, I wasn't with her daily. And to be with Lynn daily and the way she would talk, you don't even understand. Did you stay, did you put those pills there, Jesse? I, I swear to God, I didn't put them there. I put them there whole. Before I left, I put them there whole. Where? They were on the plate. <laughs> on here, on the plate. And those were the pills she was supposed to take for the day. That's exactly what I did. I crushed them for her before I did not crush them that day. And I'm honest. I crushed them when she said she wanted to crush them, she put them in the pudding. I did not crush them. They were on that plate the whole when I left. Because she was supposed to take them. And that I, I, I know for 100% fact. I didn't move her body at all except to touch her breathing when I came back. She was done. I think we're where we're going to be. <laughs> Detective, I want to ask you a few questions about this clip. We'll kind of go... Um, in reverse order, there was another discussion about there being a camera installed at the hospital. Do you recall that? Yes. And last week, do you remember when we went through Exhibit 207 with the jury, which was a portion of the medical record? Yes. And can you summarize what that record said about the camera for the jury? Uh, there was a camera placed in the room uh, due to... Lynn not follow, Ms. Hernan not following instructions regarding getting out of bed and not using the call light appropriately. In any of the medical records you reviewed, was there notations that this friend, Jesse Krzyzewski, indicated Lynn Hernan was suicidal? None whatsoever. There was a discussion, and if we refer back to Exhibit 228, what remind the jury what date Ms. Hernan got out of the hospital? September 28th, 2018. 
So that's six days until the date of death, right? Yes. And um, in this clip, there was a lot of discussion about Ms. Hernan having dosed different things with Visine. Remember that? Yes. And in terms of how many times Ms. Hernan drank a water bottle like that, what did Ms. Krzyzewski say? I'm sorry, what's the question? Sure, when there was discussion about dosing different things like vodka and water bottles, right? Yes. Did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you that the first day Lynn Hernan ever drank a bottle with Visine in it was October 3rd? No. What did she say about that? She said she had been doing that um, for a while. She had been dosing uh, the water and vodka. But in reality, only six days had elapsed since Ms. Herna was in the hospital. Correct. Okay. When that discussion was going on, do you recall Ms. Krzyzewski saying she usually tried to drink it when I was there? Sustained. Did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you when Ms. Hernan usually tried to drink her dosed during, items? During that portion of the interview, Ms. Krzyzewski stated that um, Ms. Hernan had tried to drink her dosed water or vodka when Ms. Krzyzewski was present. Did she say why? To make sure she was okay. Was that consistent with what Ms. Krzyzewski was telling you about Ms. Hernan wanting to die? No, that would not be consistent. Do you recall in the clip that the jury just watched the time period of the argument between these two individuals changing? Yes. And how did it change from the previous clip to this clip? Obviously there was an initially, there was no discussion of any argument. Um, during the initial portion of this clip, it was, um, we argued for, Ms. Krzyzewski stated that her and Ms. Hernan argued for over an hour about the one bottle of water with the six bottles of Visine in it to, it was a very short argument and just got it for. And finally, during the clip the jury just watched, was there more discussion regarding Ms. Hernan's will? Yes. What did Ms. Krzyzewski say about her knowledge of the will? During that initial portion, she stated that she believed it was just for medical decisions and I believe the lockbox at BMO Harris. Okay, so there is a clip where a piece of paper was shown to Ms. Krzyzewski, right? Correct. Do you remember what that was? Uh, I believe that was the living will and testament. Okay. And fair to say that's different than uh, than the will filed in probate? Yes. Okay. So during this clip, what did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you about her understanding of the actual will in this case? That she was not uh, the representative for that. Do you, We talked about this last week. Do you recall when we um, showed the jury Exhibit 83? And if I could publish that, please, it's already in evidence. We're all set real quick. Detective, do you remember when we talked about this last week? Yes, I do. And there's some markings at the top of the paper. Does that indicate this was actually filed? That is correct, yes. And if we go to page two, And page three, can you remind the jury of the signing date on this document? Ms. Krzyzewski signed it on July 29th, 2018. And when was the interview that we just listened to? <clears throat> July 11th, 2019. And who is the beneficiary of, of Exhibit 83? Ms. Krzyzewski. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We can take down the publish, and I believe now we are on slide eight of Exhibit 204. Okay. 
and we're all set. Now nothing. I'm gonna be charged though. We don't make that decision. It's not, it's not we our put a case together. We drop down to the DA's office. You guys have done this for years. What are, what are you thinking here? I need to know what I'm realistically looking at. Well, I guess it's going to be up to the district attorney's office whether or not they believe that you... I would guess you have some culpability of her death if it's assisted suicide or, or conspiracy to, to cause death. We don't make that. That's illegal stuff. Our, our job is to find the truth. And what do you guys actually think at this point with everything I've said? I think, I, I, I'll tell you right from, from day one. I think she wanted to die and you helped her. That's what I think happened. The money was just collateral damage. She It'll just be a moment if the jury wants to stretch and stand at all. Please go ahead. All right, thank you. And again, for the record, this is Exhibit 204, Slide 8. No. <clears throat> now nothing. I'm going to be charged, though. We don't make that decision. It's not, it's not we put our a case together. We drop down to the DA's office. You guys have done this for years. What, what are you thinking here? I need to know what I'm realistically looking at. Well, I guess it's going to be up to the district attorney's office whether or not they believe that you... I would guess you have some culpability of her death if it's assisted suicide or, or conspiracy to, to cause death. We don't make that. That's illegal stuff. Our, our job is to find the truth. And what do you guys actually think at this point with everything I've said? I think, I, I, I'll tell you right from, from day one. I think she wanted to die and you helped her. That's what I think happened. The money was just collateral damage. She, you, you, were, you were the one taking care of her. You were the one wiping her, so she, she was taking care of you. And I get that. Because that's hard work. You, you, and she's not blind. She, I know she's like family, but it's not your mother. No. It's not your sister. So she appreciated someone like you being there, sitting watching soaps, chatting with her, listening to her problems. And, and I get that she wore you down. She wore you down, and you, you, you broke. And you didn't want to lie to Scott. I did. Because you love him, and he's a good guy. And, but she wore you down. You didn't want to lie to your mother. And you were carrying too much load, more, more than your shoulders could carry. That's what happened. And that day, she decided this was it. That's why the, the, the stuff's pulled out. Where the little, little kind of say, hey, I want so and so to take this, so and so to take that. When it made a decision and you helped her facilitate it, that's what happened. Amen, that's the truth. And you know it. That doesn't make you a bad person. It does, though. 
It doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you someone to care about and love her. And you got out of control. Right? You got out of control. And looking back at it, you feel so bad. Because you know, you know that's not who you are. I know that I'm going to probably go to prison for the rest of my life for helping with she wanted. I know she wanted it in your house. <laughs> You made a mistake, but she wore you down. She has some culpability because she pressured and pressured and pressured every day for months. I watched my daddy die. Tell me, Christopher, just let me go. What do you say to your father? I get it. She's like a mother to you. She's taking care of you. Because I went through all this with you guys for days, and I finally, I know it was too tired, but I finally told you guys. And finally, slide nine. No. Your question. You asked, and Chris answered your question. I didn't. I know I made my, my, my point really clear yesterday. You think you killed everybody? I, I, I am now venturing that this was just what Chris says it was. But I also think that we're 95% of the truth, that we're still missing that 5%. And it's tough because we are getting it bit by bit by bit. We are getting there, but we're still not there. We know 95%. We're still missing. There's still some things that aren't adding up. So I'm going to tell you, this is your last opportunity because if to start later on, you decide you want to talk, you want to, you want to tell us the last 5%. This is the chance because, again, we, talk, we talked about appearances and how it looks later on when it's this and it's that and it's changed. This is it. This is the time to talk about that last 5% that we need to know because later on, again, it's going to look different. Okay? So is there anything else that you want to tell us? Is there anything else about that scene? about that morning. I can honestly say I did not crush those pills that day for her. I left with the plate of pills that she was supposed to take. That I can say. You I did not. morning when this was her plan. She knew her talk about it. So I don't want to say I knew it was her plan because it's been her plan. Mm -hmm. So I'm being 100%. I, got you. I, I, I did not think I was going to come to find her like this. She was she'd pulling stuff out like this for a reason, and you knew it. She's been pulling that out, though, because when we went to the hospital, she had that with us. Because that was for the hospital. I mean, there are other stuff that she pulled yeah. out, did you know? She always, did. she always said, this is where okay. this is, this is where this is. Make sure. She told me that for the last six months, where all her stuff is to know and have ready and... My boss um, was going to knock on the door here real quick because we had two, two dead bodies in two or three days. He wants this done a half hour yeah. ago. you got to lay it out. Yeah. That morning you talked, you knew what your plan was. Yeah. I've known it for months. And when you gave her that bottle, you were sick inside. I was sick inside, but I didn't that think I'd find her. This was kind of going to Because I... She it was a good possibility this was going to happen. Yes. Yeah. Because she was done. Yep. Yeah. And you knew that. But I, I can honestly say I did not know I was and not. I was the, you, the you personal were representative around the that world. That afternoon, you was still spinning in your head that you thought, I'm going to go back there, she might be dead. And you couldn't tell because no. he's too good of a person. <laughs> no. And you feel horrible. But you feel horrible about all this. Her last will at the house had the Anthony and my mom on it. The last will that was at the house, just so you guys know, because you probably found it. Mm -hmm. It was there. I, I did not know that. I want that. No, Again, my I mom knew too. From day one, that so. you, were, you tried to help her. She she was done. She was in such pain and such misery, and you did what you thought was right. It's that simple. You did what you thought was right. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you feel horrible about it. I don't even want to say it was right. I did what she wanted because she wanted it. But you resisted a bunch of times oh, before, and time. she wore you down, and this time this was it. She if I would have thought this was right, I wouldn't have pulled the trigger and just shot her. You can't do that. Do You're that. not that person. You're not that person. Detective, shortly after, um, is this interview then concluded? Yes, it is. Is that the last time that you spoke with Ms. Kroszewski? No, it is not. Okay. Um, I want to ask you, I want to go back and ask a couple questions about interrogation techniques. 
have you received training specific to interrogation techniques? Yes, I have. And we can take down the publish, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, Attorney Nicolai, did you turn your lapel mic back on? Yes. Okay. Just checking. Could you give the jury an example of some different types of techniques that are taught to investigators for interrogation purposes, just generally? There's several different techniques um, about gaining rapport uh, with someone you're trying to interview. Um, obviously, you want a second person in there uh, to in, with the interview, and sometimes you are you're you're taught, and it's a common factor that sometimes you use techniques. Every every investigator uses different techniques, but there are trained ones where you. Uh, provide information again, maybe uh, not misleading, but not correct information. It's uh, hard to say. It's it's an absolute out, outright lie, but um, you know there is different techniques that are used during interrogations. And when you said building rapport, would that sometimes include sympathizing or empathizing with a suspect? Very much so. Does that is that a technique you sometimes use? My preferred, yes. You obviously want to gain a rapport with anybody you're talking to, um, especially when you're doing an interrogation. Does that mean that sometimes you're sympathizing with someone and, and you don't actually feel that way? Yes. Sometimes you agree to things that you may actually be disagreeing with. And when I talked about that earlier, that's where, again, you're not trying to mislead or lie, but um, again, agreeing with them at the time is gaining that rapport or gaining that trust, uh, unfortunately. Now, you said that you actually spoke with Ms. Kraszewski again? Yes. Was that the next day on the 12th of July? I believe so, yes. So, just so that the jury is recalling what we've done so far, last week we began with Exhibit 202, and was that July 9th of 2019? Correct. And so that first interview, was that the same day as the search warrants? Yes, it was. Okay. Exhibit 203, um, what date was that? July 10th. And then Exhibit 204 that we just watched, what day was that? July 11th. So, so far we've been consecutive days. Correct. Okay. Uh, I'd like to show just the witness Exhibit 205. And Detective, let me know when that's on your screen. It is on my screen. And in terms of the title page, does that look familiar to you? Yes, it is. And looking at the slides briefly, do you believe you recognize those still images? Yes. What is Exhibit 205? Portions of the interview conducted with uh, Ms. Krzyzewski on July 12th, 2019. Okay. Why did this interview occur? I believe, again, we were requested to speak with uh, Ms. Krzyzewski. And did you honor that request? Yes, we did. <clears throat> have you seen all the clips in Exhibit 205 before? Yes, I have. Are they fair and accurate clips of the interview that you participated in? Yes, it is. I'd move Exhibit 205 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 205 is received, permission to publish is granted. And detectives, similarly to the other video exhibits we've had. Does this title page indicate the date of the interview? Yes, it does. Okay. Going to slide two. Uh, and for the record, this begins at 16, 17, 17. Uh, Detective, what time of day is that? Uh, 4, 17 p.m. Okay. And I'd ask that we publish this slide. A video that she recorded and phone conversation or not phone conversations um talking conversations and papers that she had signed that when she was first like going through some stuff i also do have some bottles of visine with dates on them and i do have that partial gun i don't have any bullets i don't have the bomb that fires it and this is all a safekeeping that lynn actually held on to and i added to in case something ever happened 
I didn't want to tell you guys until I talked to an attorney, because that's my biggest thing, is I want to talk to somebody, um, because I don't know what to do going forward. And my mom goes, well, didn't they find it? I said, no, it's not at the house. My mom doesn't know where it is. She doesn't know anything. Okay, so with that being said, mm -hmm. you, you, you just made a comment. You yep. said you wanted, you wanted an attorney. I need to clarify. Yeah. Remember, Jesse, yeah. at any time you, yeah. you decide you, yeah. you don't want to talk to us any further and you want an attorney, you yeah. can end this, okay? So I am with, I, right, you still right, understand your rights and you don't want to keep talking to us, okay? Is that, is yes. that true? Correct. Okay, remember. My, no, and that's why I'm letting you know. Um, I have put it off um, because I was hoping she would have been here, sir. I kind of, my, where I'm at right now, and this is why I wanted to talk to you guys because I don't know how to handle it or without being able to talk to her, don't know if you guys can interfere, talk to, but I don't know how it works. Basically, this is where I'm at, is I know that something's going to happen, obviously. I know you guys are still looking into stuff. Um, I know it's And slide three, please. <clears throat> But I, I feel like I have been very, yes, I went back and forth with you guys, but I feel like now you guys know the most. I feel like I still don't know. You guys are still digging into stuff, and I don't know what. I don't really know why. Um, because, you know, you guys said, well, the medical examiner said this. And something Detective Cole said to me yesterday caught me wrong at the end of the interview. And he kept saying, oh, I think you did it for this. And at the end of the interview... He made me feel like he was saying, you're a murderer. That's honestly how I felt. So I went, I'm getting two different sides here. I don't know if you guys are playing like the good cop, bad cop. I always watch cop shows on TV too much. I'm telling you, I do. I'm not, well, well, with the three, I, interview, I, well, with the three I, interviews, I, I don't think we were either. I, I mean, yeah, he, he, he I got I don't little, know what to feel about any of this right now. We, and weren't, that's playing, we weren't playing that, though, Jesse. I, I don't know. Were we? I mean, well, I, I don't, I he, got a little, he got a little animated yesterday, but I mean, for I the most part, we weren't dicks to you, were we? No, I'm not saying that. I just don't know at this point where to feel like things are. I don't know. I don't know what to think next because I'm not getting anywhere. Do you know what I mean? No, like, I, I don't. So I don't. I used to work for a law firm. So it's, I'm not saying I'm done talking. I just don't know when's enough to be like, okay, I need to talk to somebody because I'm facing some serious charges. You know, that's where I'm at. I don't know because well, I'm getting it both ways. I'm getting, well, I see it looking like this. Well, obviously, you guys don't know what the DA is going to do. Mm -hmm. But then you guys are like, well, we're still looking into this. So I don't know what I'm supposed to Well, we're to still looking into the entire investigation, mm -hmm. Jesse. I mean, it's not just, this isn't, you know, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband, or wife. She pissed me off, and I, yeah. she, you know, she, she, she told me she was cooking dinner. She didn't, and I shot her. It's, yeah. it's not cut, cut and dry like that. Yeah. There is so many different components yeah. to this, and you know, yesterday I think I, I think we're ninety, ninety-five percent. Uh, I think we're all on the same page yeah. as far as you know w what happened. I still think there are some loose ends that we have to tie up, and okay. it would be nice to tie up. But now you're coming forward and you're saying, I have this, this, and that that might help me. Yeah. And that's the part where it boggles the mind of if something's going to help you, yeah. Jesse, why aren't we looking at this? Why aren't you giving this? Because the reality is you knew you were giving Lynn, I mean, something that had mm -hmm. six bottles of Visine in it. But I also wasn't giving it to her without her knowing that either. That's where I think, I feel like now you guys are going, did she know? But, did here's, she know? but here's the part. So you want us, because we can't ask Lynn that question anymore. And I you want us to trust you and believe yeah. that you're telling us that and yeah. saying, hey, detective, I swear to you, Lynn knew she was getting that. Yeah. But what are we supposed to think when Tuesday's a different story, Wednesday's a different story, Thursday's a different story, and now come Friday, I have stuff that could help me, but I don't want to. That's where I'm telling you the perception of yeah. what are we supposed to think when it hasn't been as, all right, guys, here's what happened. We're not getting that. So help me <laughs> believe you when you're telling me that, Jesse, and that's why I'm telling you. Would it be easy enough? Okay, Jesse said she gave her six uh, a bottle of water with six visines, and here you go, Judge, District Attorney, let's charge her a first-degree homicide. You would have been an intake court yes. today. Your face would have been all over the news, yeah. but we're not doing that. Yeah. Here we are. We're sitting. We're still trying to talk. We're still trying to figure yeah. it out. So, you know, I mean, 
Help, help me out here, Jesse. <laughs> help me. Trust me. I, I... In slide four. When did she drink the vodka? The night before. The night before. So and the night was, before she died. And you know, I thought of this because I don't think I clarified it very well. She had two, it was roughly, I'm going to say somewhere between like three and five. I don't know my exact time I was there. I still don't know. So I'm honest. I'm not good with times. You can check on my phone. I'm not lying. I was there. I just don't know for sure. Is it early afternoon wise? And she drinks. They're like about this tall and about know, like that. That's what she always drank her vodka. But it wasn't straight vodka. I want to clarify that because I don't think I said that. And he's like, well, she couldn't have drank that much that quick. She never drank straight vodka. It was always vodka water. My mom knows that too. Um, but I want to clarify that because I don't think I said that. And I wanted to make that sure that was said. So vodka water, by the Yes. Well, then. That's why I Okay. Um, so when she put it in the, when she put it, you're saying still saying she yeah. put it in? I'm still saying she put it okay. in. I was not there when she did that. I was not there. I came back and the bottles were empty. These were two, three days prior when okay. I came back and the bottles were empty. And I asked her where they were. Would she have, do you think she would have put it in a bottle of vodka? I mean, was it the big Fleischmann's bottle? It's or a was big it bottle, small? but there was only about, I want to say, uh, not a lot. Okay. So would no. she have put it in there or would she have put it in her glass? Of no, vodka? she would have put it in the bottle. Yeah, Usually she put the stuff bottle. in the bottles. Yeah. Okay. So the water. Are you there when she puts it in the no. water? No. I was not there when she put it in either or. I have before, but not this time. Okay. And I know when she puts it in the water, I usually can tell because of the top. Usually. But she got used to me throwing those ones out on her. And when you when you say that, can you describe how what do you well, mean? Because you that? know when you on cap a I don't know when you on cap you can generally know yeah. this. Okay. Because after she passed my mom went to grab water out of the fridge, too, and like days later, and I said, don't grab anything, because I just don't trust the bottles anymore. I got to the point where I threw out everything, so. And the one thing my mom did ask, out of curiosity, regardless of how she looked, how come that water bottle and the stuff around her, her blanket and things like that, how come that wasn't taken? Because at the time, it didn't, there was nothing suspicious. Okay. You know, we didn't think. I was just curious myself because I was like, even the blanket, I'm like, I remember that was there. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'll, hey, Jesse, when we get a call from medical examiner yeah. saying that there's a problem because it's not what it looks like yeah. that day, trust me, it threw everybody for a loop. Yeah. And when you talk about time of the investigation, that's why it took so long yeah. because clearly, you know, sometimes... So. We, we, sometimes we tend to do that as cops. You know, yeah. we go to a scene, and sometimes we go overkill. But we do when we do it, we do it for that reason because you can never go back. And this is one of those ones where you well, wish you had that time machine yeah, and you go back. Yeah. yeah. So um, we we didn't, and you know, yeah. unfortunately, we were kind of starting from behind the eight ball on this one. Um, I do want to clarify something else too, but if you want to keep going, then no, go ahead and clarify. Um, as far as the that paper, mm -hmm. I did again. I brought that up today because it was bothering me. That is a living will. That is not her. And I really want to clarify that because I know I was with her when we signed that, and that was purposely for medical purposes and for her lockbox. And that really bothered me because I went, I really didn't. And my mom and the attorney actually. Have you guys talked to the attorney at all? Okay, the attorney can attest to that because we called her together. And said Lynn passed away, whatever, so forth, because we had, Lynn gave us everything. This is what you do, this is what, I mean, she was good about that. It's just like those papers that were out, she was always had everything ready. But um, I did not know she changed her will. And I really don't. I didn't know I was a personal rep, and I wasn't even on the will before. It was my mom and Anthony. She changed Detective, in that clip, Ms. Krzyzewski asked you why certain things weren't collected from the scene. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, on October 3rd, 2018, if Ms. Krzyzewski would have said to anyone from law enforcement that water bottle was full of Izine, would it have been collected? Yes, very much so. Hold on. There's been an objection. Object to speculation as to what other people would have done. Sustained. Uh, Jerry will disregard the answer he attempted to provide. And slide five, please. But I 
did not, and I, that really bothered me because the financial aspect, I know you guys keep going back to that, but if you talk to the attorney, she knows too, because that was one thing I wanted to do too if I got out, was ask her when that was changed, and she can verify that I didn't know either because of when I called. My mom actually said, I'm calling, blah, 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 and she said, actually, I need to talk to Jesse, not you. So. Who got the proceeds from the house sale? The they sale were split. Was, uh, between who? Me and Anthony. Okay. I mean, the majority went to creditors, so. Okay. I didn't know if you guys had talked to the attorney or dealt with any of that or. No, I mean, and that's all to do in the future here. <laughs> um, first things first was trying to clarify. Well, no, because we have a claim hitting probate, coming back to probate right now, and everything's been settled. So I thought maybe you guys were into that too, so I didn't know. Okay. No, I mean, we know you were at the probate, yeah. Yeah. But, um, and honestly, after all the credit cards, between me and Anthony, it was 1300 or 13000 Sorry, I said that wrong. 13000 yeah. yeah. Profit. Yes. After the creditors. And now we have more creditors still coming in. It was closed, but they're reopening. And that's just because we couldn't keep up with everything that there was. They had their time frame. I had what we were getting forwarded as far as mail and stuff. I knew of majority, but I didn't obviously know every single thing. I and mean, she had multiple credit cards from the same company that I wasn't even aware of. Like, I think she had like four, four to, no, seven all from the same company, but some were under different names, like Capital One Wise. So, I mean, she had an insane, I've never seen somebody with that many credit cards, I'll be honest. I mean, never, never. <laughs> even the attorney said that. <laughs> And I do want to clarify, too, because I know you guys are looking at financial. I did not open anything after she passed away. Nothing. So I don't know where that's coming from, but I know that for a fact. I did not touch anything. We never keep the okay. after she died. No. Oh, that's what I thought you guys said yesterday. And I was like, I did not. Anything I did was with her while she was alive. I didn't do anything without her. All right. Can you uh, give me too much water? water? By Jane Korea, please. Please. I'm just kidding. Bad joke. I'm a bad guy. Detective, the end of that clip had a comment from you in it. Yes. Why did you say that? I wanted to see her rea I wanted to see Ms. Krzyzewski's reaction. To me, I was questioning how serious she was taking this, and I wa was gauging, wanted to see what she would do. What did she do? Laughed. <clears throat> Moving to slide six, please. <coughs> well, let's get back yeah. to this whole thing. So let's go over stuff. I know yeah. Chris told you to sit there and said, this guy thinks that he murdered, you murdered her for money. Okay, we talked about yesterday, all right? Um, now you're saying that you have evidence that can validate your claim that Lynn was trying to hurt herself and that she basically was enlisting your help to do that. Yes. Now you're saying that you have evidence of that. Explain to me why that you're, whole, that you're so against showing us that. I'm not against it. Um, I just am not ready yet. That's what it is. I'm not against it. I'm really not. Um, I just don't know. I guess I don't. I'm not ready yet. And it was something I thought the other day, and it's just because I realistically, that's the point where I want to talk to somebody, and I want to have a better idea of my options with them, because I don't know where things stand right now. So that's kind of where I'm at. It's not that I'm not saying, oh, I'm going to just hang on to it forever. Or, or, I'm not. I'm not. That's not my plan at all, obviously. But I just, at this point, I don't know where I stand as far as the legal process or how things work. I don't know enough knowledge, I guess. Is there anything that I can help clarify with you where you're at? Detective, at the beginning of this interview, the first clip kind of cuts in and, and Ms. Krzyzewski is already talking and listing some things. Do you remember that? Yes. Like gun parts and Visine bottles. Do you remember Cor that? Yes, I do. And in this clip, you just reference something that that Ms. Krzyzewski has. Can you clarify to the jury what you're discussing? Uh, the same items uh, that she discussed, including, I believe it was some tapes as well, and uh, writings. 
and trying to see if uh, she'd be willing to present those for us, which would indicate that Ms. Hernan, Ms. Krzyzewski alleged that these would indicate that Ms. Hernan, Hernan was suicidal. In any portion the jury hasn't viewed, does Ms. Krzyzewski tell you where those items are? Okay, not at this point? Not at this point, no. Okay. <clears throat> Moving to slide seven. <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, is there, do you have a dead body in the storage shed? Is there something, is there, so, no. is there a body in there? It, for me, it's that the legality of things right now is I, I've been able to talk to you guys, mm -hmm. but I haven't been able to talk to anybody else. That's hard for me is I need, you guys are doing your side of the job. Mm -hmm. I need somebody on the other side, like an attorney, not saying for questioning, but I need to know. Again, so you're, again, so that yes, you're, you're not talking. invoking your no, rights, correct? No, okay. Okay. Every time you say I know, that, and I'm that's why I don't want to keep saying it in I, that sense. But because that's it's, why. the case is important to yeah. me, Jesse, but in the same aspect, I understand your rights, and I respect yeah. the fact that people have their rights. So if... Again, and at that's any why time, you, okay, at I any mean, time I, you feel that you're in, you're in too deep yes. or this or that, you yes. let me know, okay? Because I'm not going to yes. say, I don't no. want you to do that. And okay? I guess the, that's my biggest thing. I don't want to, I guess, waste your time talking on that right now because that's what's holding me back right now is not being able to talk to an attorney about it. Anything else, I have no problem answering questions or doing, but I just... But you do have, you do have the ability to contact one. I mean, I in, the jail, in the jail, you can make a phone call. Yeah, but I don't have anybody, like, in my, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like, I mean, my mom's looking, she just started today, you know, but it's, I don't want to say it's thrown out the window. Why would, if you don't want, if you don't want us to see this, if you don't want us to talk about it, if you don't yeah. want us, then, then why even bring it up, Jesse? Why, why say that there's this stuff hanging? Because well, and that's why you, I you, said, you, said the, you said the payment's overdue, right? You said the payment's yeah. coming up due. Yeah. You know those places don't wait long. They're going to get rid of your shit. They're going to get rid of it in a hurry. They're going to get rid of it. So why risk losing something that could help you? At because this the, point, the, the reality I'm, is, Jesse, yeah. you're, you know yeah. that this is a serious investigation. Yeah, I do. And I think I just need a few days on it. That's where I'm at with that. I'm willing to answer and do anything because that's what I want to do right now. But this I'm just sitting on right now. And it's just something that I just feel I want to. I, I don't have the best answer except that I want to talk to somebody else about it. That's the only thing I can honestly say because it's true. So you just want to ask somebody about the storage issue? Yeah. Okay. So I want to talk to you about the phone stuff a yes. little bit more, okay? I was going to ask you that too. Everything you guys did take, mm -hmm. eventually do we get that back? Or I don't even know what you all took. I'm just, I know the phones obviously. Does that anything about any anything that holds evidentiary value, we're going to keep. Okay. Okay. So I'm assuming you guys took my laptop, right? Yes. I mean, it's brand new, so there's nothing yeah. on there, so yeah. not worried, but yeah, we, just asking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, all electronics okay. that we took. Your cell phone. Yes. We were able to recover a lot of deleted stuff. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It is good. <laughs> it is good, Jessica. Because I knew there was a lot deleted, so that's why yeah. I was hoping that. <laughs> so. What what was some of the, why would you have been re researching certain poisons? I wasn't. That was her. That's what I said she was doing. She was looking at any options, and I said that. She looked at the pill. She looked at, I mean, I know some of it. I don't remember all of it, but she looked at different options. She looked at a lot of different options. Okay. But there were some recent searches. Recent? Yeah, like in June of 2019. For what? Some recent poison. I don't know on that one. No. It wasn't poison that she had used, or was it? I don't think so. Then I don't know. <laughs> I really don't on that one. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd be honest, I don't on that one. Why would I have looked for it recent? All right, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> you tell me. I mean, I'll be honest, we do. I told you, we watch a lot of, um, like, the live PD and stuff, so we look up a lot of, like, random things off of there that we see, but... I don't see you looking up a poison. That's why I'm like, I don't know on that one. And in June, that's even more odd. So. Yeah. A little concerning. I mean, I'm not trying to poison myself. If that's what you think. No, <laughs> no, I, I don't think you're going to poison yourself. I mean, you had that opportunity <laughs> long ago, right? Yeah, <laughs> plenty of times. Okay. 
Okay. So what do you think about the whole situation, Jesse? Let me ask you. I think it's a mess. I think it's all a big mess. I, I wish I knew things I know now differently than then, or I wish I would have reached out or done a lot different, I guess, is where I'm at. Like what? <laughs> Gotten more help, asked for more help, <clears throat> not helped her. I mean, a lot of things. <laughs> if I could go back in history, I wouldn't be sitting here, I'll tell you that. That's not the truth. Now... You've heard me talk. I've kind of beaten it to death here um, about the perception issue. Yeah. You know, that's why we talk. We stress the importance of talk, telling the truth the, the first time from the get go, or even the second time. Okay. No, I tell and you the first time is better. The first time is better, <laughs> but the second time is the, is a is key one because now that third time and now today, you know. So it's like. Nope, never saw the Visine. Nope, yes, there was Visine. Never drank it, never never saw it. Yeah, I put some in there one time. Um, you know, but then, nope, didn't know about this. Or there was no way because it was in there. They, oh, yeah, okay, then there were six bottles in there. So, and now we hear this storage shed stuff. And it, it just, Jesse, whether you believe it or not, I don't want to sit here and I don't want to jack you up on these charges. I don't want to sit here and charge you with something that, you know, doesn't fit. Yeah. So I, I can't stress enough that if there's something that says, because helping out, some, helping somebody... is a lot different than actually doing that yourself. Correct. Yeah. 100%. So... That's what, that's what... I thought of this today, too, and I thought, you guys didn't take her phone either. Her cell phone. No. And I thought of that after the fact, too, and I'm like, I don't know if there would have been anything because she couldn't internet search on there. But she used that phone numerous times when she called people prior, like when she was first getting her pills and things of that nature, when she was looking at other options that I didn't have access to. Um, but I did think of that, too. I thought, I was just trying to think of any. Honestly, why I've been sitting here, I've been racking my brain with everything possible. So that's kind of where I'm at. There was a lot of things that she said and done over such a big time frame that I just wish I had... I don't know, more information. So I wish I had more information, Jesse. I really do. Did your mom know that she was drinking the Visine again? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Drinking the Visine? Yeah. Or no. She knew about the gun. Nope, she didn't know anything about the visine. She knew about the gun. She knew about the pills. Um, and she knew she was suicidal, but she didn't know to what extent. Because my mom, that was the person she said to, did you tell them about the gun? I said, yes, I did. So I said, I'm sure they'll ask you or they'll want to know something, but I said, you actually knew of that. So. Because she was very frustrated with me with that one. Your mom was? Yeah. And that's because my mom looks out. She loves Lynn, but she's going to look out for me, obviously, before Lynn, because, you know, only makes sense, obviously. Well, at this point, everybody should be looking out for themselves. I mean, you know, you should be worrying about number one for you, and that's you, and that's your future. Um, you know, nothing is set in stone right now, but unfortunately, Jesse, you're kind of in a little bit of a quicksand situation here. And I'm trying to offer you a branch here to say, prove to me and Chris and to Mandy well, and, and the, everyone else yeah. that you're, you're saying you help, you were trying to help her do this. And you have evidence that's there, Jesse. I, the thing is, is I don't know what extent is there. That's what it is. I don't know how much is there or what is said or what was. I know she always said, you know, that was her biggest thing. I'll be very honest. She said it all the time. When she, when she first started her downhill spiral, and said, I'm just, I give up. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be sick anymore. When she first started that, she said, one day out of the blue, she said, if I ever asked you for help, would you help me? And I said, what do you mean by that? And she, after, ever since that day, she kept saying it, kept saying it, kept saying it. 
And I said, Liam, that's a lie. <laughs> Detective, in this clip the jury just saw, um, the, the phrase storage shed was utilized a few times. Do you know why? Yes. Why is that? By now, we, uh, Ms. Krzyzewski had already stated to us that the items she was referring to earlier regarding <coughs> tapes, visine bottles, and parts of the gun uh, were being held in a storage shed. Did you know where? No, we did not. <clears throat> there was also some discussion about some things that were recovered from Exhibit 168, which is the defendant's cell phone download. Do you recall those? questions yes I do and that some of the items recovered had been deleted yes what did what did Miss Krzyzewski say about that that you recovered deleted items she was glad that we recovered deleted items okay did she appear to know things had been deleted yes she did I'd like to please show the witness exhibits 191 through 197 And detective, let me know when you can see those. I can see them. Oh, okay. Do you recognize those documents? Yes, I do. What are they? Uh, they are documents or a file document that was located on the cell phone download for Ms. Krzyzewski. Did you flag these different pages of the download? Yes, I did. Why? I believe based on the titles of the documents that they would be, uh, they would have evidentiary value for the case. Okay. Do they look like fair and accurate depictions of pages from the download in this case? Yes. I move exhibits 191 through 197 into evidence. No objection. Exhibits 191 through 197 are received. Did you ask for permission to publish? Yes, I would ask for permission to publish. And permission to publish granted. Well, will you be going through these now? It is about 10 o'clock, and I'd like to take a break soon. Sure. So if, if it takes oh, maybe 10, 15 minutes, then we'll take the break after okay. that. And, Detective, I'm not going to ask you to go line by line through all of these, but if we scroll to the bottom, do you see the exhibit sticker 191? Yes, I do. And if we could please zoom in at line 34, which is the last line on this page. Um, you indicated that these are documents on the phone? Yeah, file, file documents, yes. Okay. In fact, some of them, well, all of them look like they've got a file extension, like a computer file would have? Correct. Okay, what's the line 34? 2007, book matter, criminal poisoning, poisoning. PDF. And that right, farthest right column with the red yes in it, do you know what that column is for? Yes. And what is that? It shows the file's been deleted. Can you tell when it was deleted? February 19th, 2019. And can you tell when it was accessed? July 30th, 2018. Moving to 192, please. If we could please zoom in on line 53. <clears throat> Detective, again, is this another page from Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone download? Yes, it is. And could you please read the document in line 53? Acute cyanide poisoning from jewelry cleaning solutions, PDF. Was that a document that had been deleted? Yes, it is. When? June 15th of 2019. Can you tell when the document was accessed? June 15th, 2019 as well. Okay, moving to exhibit 193. If we could please zoom in lines 85 through 87. Detective, can you please read the document names in lines 85, 86, and 87? Uh, 85 is cyanide.pdf, 
86 is cyanide 11303 final PDF. 87 is cyanide background PDF. Were those three items deleted? Yes, they were. And remind the jury how you can tell that? On the right hand side is the column where it says yes in uh, red lettering. That would uh, be the deleted column. And when was line 85 deleted? February 19th of 2019. Can you tell when it was accessed? July 26th, 2018. What about line 86? When was that deleted? February 19th, 2019. And when was it accessed? July 26th, 2018. And line 87, was that also deleted? Yes, it was. When was that? June 15th, 2019. Is that the same date as when it was accessed? That's correct. Okay. Going to exhibit 194, please, if we could um, zoom in on the top line, 115. Detective, can you read that document name, please? Have an exit strategy for students 14 chemical suicides PDF. Was that document deleted? Yes, it was. When? February 19th, 2019. Can you tell when it was accessed? July 30th, 2018. What about line 116? What's that document? Hazmat suicide PDF. Was that also deleted? Yes, it was. When? February 19th, 2019. When was it accessed? July 29th, 2018. If we could please scroll down and zoom in on lines 120 and 121. Detective, can you please read line 120? Household poisons, PDF. Was that document deleted? Yes, it was. When? February 19th, 2019. When was it accessed? July 30th, 2018. Could you please read the document in line 121? <clears throat> HPA, sodium, potassium, cyanide, general information, V1, PDF. Was that deleted? Yes, it was. When? June 15th, 2019. When was it accessed? June 15th, 2019. Thank you, and going to exhibit 195, if we could please zoom in on line 165. Detective, could you read the document in line 165, please? NRT, WMD, CHEM, C-H-E-M, cyanide salts, QRG, final, 2017, 0217.pdf. Was that PDF deleted? Yes, it was. When? June 15th, 2019. And when was it accessed? June 12th, 2019. Thank you. Moving to Exhibit 196, please, if we could zoom in toward line 192. Detective, could you read that document for the jury, please? Response to Chemical Suicides Webinar. Was that document deleted? Yes, it was. When? June 19th, 2019. When was it accessed? July 30th, 2018. And uh, finally, Exhibit 197, please. Detective, if we could uh, look at line 214, if you could please read that to the jury. Therapeutic effect of arsenic trioxide AS203 on cervical cancer in vitro and in vivo through, oh boy, uh, a top of Atopatosis induction dot PDF. Was that item deleted? Yes, it was. When? February 19th, 2019. When was it accessed? August 10th, 2018. Okay, thank you. I'm finished with exhibits 191 through 197. All right, why don't we take our mid morning break then? I'll rise for the jury.
All right, we'll be in recess about 15, 20 minutes.
Before we bring the jury back out, I do want to put the one sidebar on the record um, on the exhibit. It was slide eight of 204. There were some question marks that Attorney Kukler pointed out. Attorney uh, Nikolai acknowledged. She goes, oh, they, it was a mistake, basically. They were there um, for... Uh, trimming purposes, forgot to take them out. We unpublished. They were taken out. The video replayed. Um, and so thank you for catching that. Anything either side wants to put on the record regarding that from the state? No, thank you. From the defense? No, thank you. Okay. Anything else before we bring the jury back out then? No. Okay. Madam Clerk. How's the temperature for my jurors? Is it warm? That's what I thought. It's because it's hot outside. Well, warm. I think it was like 55 when I drove in, so unusual for November in Wisconsin. Madam Clerk, if you could put a note in to facilities. We'll see if we can get it cooled off a little bit. All right, thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Attorney Nikolai, when you're ready, you can continue. Thank you, Judge. Detective Happy, before the break, we went over some documents that were in the phone download, right? Correct. When the search warrants in this case were conducted, were there multiple electronics collected? Yes, there were. Uh, including items from Scott Craig's residence? Yes. Was one of those items a laptop? Yes. Was that mentioned by Ms. Krzyzewski in the last clip that we watched of Exhibit 205? Yes, it was. And did you, was there anything significant to you about that laptop in this case? Uh, not, the lap, not the laptop itself, no. Okay, why not? Uh, there was no information uh, relevant to the investigation. Okay. Is that something that Ms. Krzyzewski relayed to you? Ms. Krzyzewski made a comment during the interview, yes. Okay. Was that significant to you? The comment was significant, yes. Why? Uh, we were talking about property being returned, and when the laptop came up, uh, her comment was, uh, the laptop's brand new, there's nothing on there, I'm not worried about that. Okay, why was that significant to you? I didn't, we didn't, hadn't asked her anything about the laptop, and to make the comment, uh, I'm not, there's nothing on there, I'm not worried about that. That seemed very odd 
and concerning to me. Okay. Uh, now going back into Exhibit 205, I believe we were on slide eight. Madam Clerk, if we could please publish. And for the record, this clip starts at 17, 29, 28. Here because I did help her and I should go. A, I know that now, obviously. It, for me, it was very hard. How can you watch somebody over and over and over go through this and go through this? And you're there with them. You're helping them. You're trying. I mean, my last poll, I thought for sure when she went to the hospital, we'd finally get somewhere. I really thought. And we did for a little bit. I mean, a few days. And that was the other thing. You guys said the walking. I thought that last thing. She literally, she walked into the hospital. They don't know how. But when we got home, she walked from my car. Now, you've seen my car. You know my car. She And she was used to her car. She couldn't get that high. But my car was lower for her. She got out of my vehicle and walked by herself. She, she did this to stop quite a few times, but walked. You saw her place. It's, you got to go all the way around. There's a step, but she never did the step. And she walked and made it in. That's why when she fell, it was her second or third night. I'm getting, there's just so many days and so much trying to remember back. But when she fell and June helped me, she was coming back from the bathroom. She was going to sit in the recliner. That's when she had the bathroom, but she was still getting up because she was trying to walk around as much as she could. And she was bending down, and she missed the recliner. So she fell literally right in front of the recliner. Like, she just missed it. You know, obviously it wasn't there, so but that's what she said she did. And you could see it. She was sitting in front of the recliner. She just couldn't. She didn't have enough strength to get herself up. So, I mean, she did walk around. I don't want to make it seem like she never did. That was the other thing that I kept thinking is you guys seem like she was completely mobile. She wasn't. She had her good days and her bad days. But she did walk around, and every day she pushed herself, usually to go to the bathroom at least once if she could, because she knew she had to keep moving. Okay. But then it comes back to, like we said, it's, it can be explained one way. And when those deputies asked you, you said no for if she was suicidal. I said yes and no. You said yes and no, but then all you said was she really loved her cats, but you didn't say she's asking me to do this. She yeah. did this. She had a gun to her head. Um, you know, looking into investigation then as compared to how it has now is two totally yeah. different things. I mean... I think it was a lot harder for me that day to realize that it actually had happened. I think that I'll be very honest. I, I didn't expect it. I did and I didn't. It was one of those things every day you never knew what was going to happen when you came back or when she didn't answer the phone, was she alive or dead? I don't know how many times I flew out there when she didn't answer the phone thinking, I'm going to find her. I'm going to find her. But you left that day and you, you said you were concerned when you left. I was always concerned, to be honest. It wasn't just that day. It was had, a lot of Had she started drinking the water by the time you were getting ready to leave? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Okay. Did you see any effects taking place? No. But she was on and off all morning as it was. No, there was no effects before I left, none whatsoever. I mean, she was a little bit drowsy, but that was always, that wasn't just from that. That was all the time. And she, I would say by the time I left, she had a few sips of it. I mean, it wasn't anything extreme, but that's usually how she was. Like, even when she drank regular, she would have a few sips, she'd take a break, and then she'd be like, oh, I need to get water in me. So she'd chug some, and she'd sip some, chug some. So, I mean, before I left, she only had a very little bit. How full was it? It was a full one. It was yeah. completely full? Yeah. Okay. So she would have poured out the water, and you said she mm -hmm. did that two days prior, was that it? What I threw out the stuff three days prior, so I had it three days before. So, he, days. so you were there when she put it in? No, I was not. So what do you mean you threw the stuff? I, I came back the next day when I came back. So this, she had to do this actually four days, because three days before is when I came back and emptied everything out. And I, that's when I said to her, I said, where are all... Where did these all go? And then she had a bunch of waters and stuff, and I always took out the garbage. That was just part of my routine with the cat litter or the garbage. And I said, where did they all go? And she's like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, she always did, because she didn't want me knowing. And I knew she put them in her water a lot. Vodka she did on occasion. Not, not extreme, but on occasion. And she liked it more, she said, with the vodka. I don't know why. She said it was a different feeling. Um, other than that, I don't know. But... What did you put it in? 
What did I put it in? Yeah, it was the yours. one time I no, did no, it. No, no, no. Oh, mine? mine? Did it I didn't put it in anything. I thought you said you did. No. You just drank it straight out of yeah. the bottle. Yeah. What did it taste like? Kind of oily. It was. It it smells like I guess, and I don't even have context. I just know because I've been around people that do like the context solution. So it smelled like. Okay. But I should say it was just kind of like a slimer. It was different than water. You could I could know what's the difference. Now you said it before that there was uh, that you got rid of all those bottles, right? You threw them away in the trash. Yep. Okay. So in the storage shed, there's visine bottles. Why would there be visine bottles in the storage shed? I have some with certain dates on them that she had taken them. Okay. Why would there be dates on them? She dated them. She dated them. Mm -hmm. Why would she date them? She did certain things where if something happened, there would be a way to come back and show she was taking a prior or so forth. What dates would be on these? They would be dates from the last, I'd say, month and a half, two months. How many bottles? Roughly, maybe about 20, or give or take. I know she had, um, she had set them aside and then they were just gone because she had like a pile of stuff. Um, she had pills in there and those ended up gone. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I could swear there was something. Oh, the gun. I took the gun. But it's not, I took it apart. It's just two pieces. It's not, there's no bullets. You can't use it for anything where, where it's how it's sitting. But I wanted something, when she started making her pile of stuff, I wanted something so I could come back and say, okay, it's not just me that has a pile of stuff. She had a pile of things and I want something to show. She really did order this. I have the receipts of that. And I have um, receipt of something else. And it has like all her shipping information, all her everything. Was it her credit card you guys used about yep. it? Yeah, because she even talked to the lady. Because it had to be shipped to the same address that matched because it's a certain product. I don't know how to word it. Like, they don't consider it a firearm because it's not a together. But she said something. I remember playing this day, and I can't remember the wording. But she said, well, it has to go. And she's like, well, that's fine. It's coming to my house anyway. But that was, like, one of the things the lady, I remember, like, what she was talking with her. So, you know, I'm I, I know basics about yeah. that stuff, but Not I guess I... <laughs> I never know I, 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 I didn't know you could buy, like, part... I would have figured that they would have done some kind of background check either way, so they're... So yeah. what? They, they can get away with it because it's not because together, it's so not, it's not yep. technically a functioning firearm? Yep. So no and background... And she literally you researched this and found two companies, and she wanted one that did, like, next day or three day or something, and they ship it immediately. Detective, did you do follow-up on the story about these two firearms? Yes, we did. Did, did you have some assistance from other people on the investigative team? Yes. Uh, were there specific detectives at that time working on all the financial? <clears throat> yes, there was. Okay. Uh, detective, I'd like to show you what's already been entered into evidence, Exhibit 225. If we get unpublished, please. <coughs> detective, do you see that on the screen before you? Yes, I do. And go to slide two, please. Do you see that as well? Yes, I do. Have you seen that before? Yes, I have. What is it? It is a uh, city card uh, bank, or a, I'm sorry, a city card doc, uh, statement. Now, when Detective Plinis was on the stand, do you recall um, those city bank records being entered into evidence as Exhibit 103? Yes. 
Is the exhibit 225 before you the entirety of those records? Not the entirety. Okay. In fact, it's just two slides long. Is that fair? Pleading. Overruled. It's foundational. Exhibit 225 is two slides. Is that true? That's correct. Okay. Does Exhibit 225 appear to be a fair and accurate copy of a portion of those Citibank records? Yes. I move Exhibit 225 into evidence. Ask for permission to publish. Any objection? I, I object because uh, this is not the officer that was involved in gathering those records. Um, overruled. Uh, exhibit 225 is received. Permission to publish is granted. So starting with slide one, detective, can you please tell the jury <coughs> what information is depicted here? Show us that this is a Citibank card ending in uh, 2932. And it indicates specifically a purchase made for uh, Brownells Inc. And it's a purchase made on August 20th of 2018 in the amount of $229.89. Do you know whose credit card the Citibank 2932 was? Yes. Whose was that? Lynn Hernan's. Okay. Uh, going to slide two of exhibit 225, please. Um, Detective, is Ms. Hernan's name on this slide? Yes, it is. Where? In the upper left-hand corner. It's under citycards.com, Lynn A. Hernan. Okay. Do you recall when this transaction was identified by the investigative team? Sorry, I'm not asking um, for a date. Yeah, okay. It, it was uh, specifically in 2019 we learned about this. Okay. Was <coughs> this purchase significant to you? Yes, it was. Why? Uh, obviously, this is information we had um, regarding Ms. Kruszewski's um, allegation that there was a uh, gun that was purchased. And when we saw the company listed on the statement, we did some background and learned that uh, Brownells Inc. is a company that sells um, unmanufactured weapons. Did you follow up with the company <clears throat> yes we did did you by way of a subpoena yes and what were you asking for records related to that purchase okay did you receive records yes we did i'd like to show just the witness please exhibit 199 and detective is this a 10 page document yes it is have you seen it before? Yes, I have. If we could keep flipping through. <clears throat> Detective, what is Exhibit 199? It is the records that were received at the from Brownells Inc. in regards to the subpoena that was served to them. Did you receive these records? Yes, I did. As you looked through Exhibit 199, are there several portions of it that are highlighted? Yes, there are. Um, for example, on page one, there's a phone number highlighted. Is that true? That is true, yes. What's that phone number? 262-421-5290. Has the jury heard about that phone number before? Yes, they have. Can you please remind us what that phone number is? This is the number uh, that Ms. Uh, Kurczewski used or stated uh, was her phone number during a call to the credit card companies. As well as, I believe it was on an application for a loan. Okay. In your investigation, were you ever able to link that 5290 number with Lynn Hernan? No, we were not. Okay, going to page two of Exhibit 199. Is there a highlight on this page, sir? Yes, there is. What is that? The email address. What is it? Lynn Hernan, 1955 at gmail.com. Has the jury seen some records about that email address? Yes. Um, can you remind them 
What significance that email address has to you in this investigation? Uh, that was uh, inter or an email that was observed to be on the cell phone download of uh, Ms. Krzyzewski and basically utilized uh, via that phone. And if we could keep scrolling through, please. Next page. Next page. Next page. Next page. Next. Detective, is there a highlighted portion on page eight of this exhibit? Yes, there is. What is that? Show us the last four digits of the credit card that was used. What are they? 2932. And if we could keep going through. <coughs> Detective, is the information we've just talked about in exhibit 199 consistent with other sources of information about this gun purchase? Yes. Specifically with the financial record in exhibit 225? That's correct. I'd move exhibit 199 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 199 is received, permission to publish is granted. We'll start with page one, detective. Um, in terms of exhibit 199, were you able to determine whether this order was placed on the internet or some other way? This was placed on the internet. And the name of the company, is that on page one of exhibit 199? Yes, it is. And what is that again? Brownells, Inc. And we <clears throat> talked about this before, but what's highlighted on page one? Is the cell phone number, or a, a phone number. In terms of the name and address for this order, can you tell the jury what that appears to be? Lynn Hernan, and the address is North 16 West 26543 Metal Grass Circle. Was that Ms. Hernan's condominium? Yes, it was. Okay. Going to page two, please. And detective, again, we talked about this. Is that the email that you uh, identified as being used on Ms. Krzyzewski's phone? Correct. Next page. <coughs> And detective, what's highlighted on page three? Is a comment or a note in the customer service section of the document. What's the date of the note? August 21st, 2018. What time? 7.58 a.m. Is that a date and time that was significant to you when you worked with Detective Schrader in this case? Yes, it was. Why? I requested that Detective Schrader uh, map that time and find out where the cell phone belonging to Ms. Kurseski was and related to this investigation, specifically that date and time. Okay. Why did you do that? I wanted to know where Ms. Kurseski was at the time of this call. What are the comments about that call? Uh, it indicates that um, the caller wants the order held for pickup or it's obviously a pickup held at the FedEx facility uh, located at 1249 Capitol Drive in Pewaukee. And I'm sorry, that was what date again? August 21st, 2018. If you could please go to our Exhibit 228 and just note that date for the jury. and perhaps just write brown owl next to it. <coughs> and going to page four, please. Detective, what is the order date for this transaction? August 20th, 2018. And that phone call was the day, the next day? Correct. Okay. Going to page five, please. And page six. What appears to have been purchased? An unassembled firearm. Okay. 
How much was it? The total was two twenty nine eighty nine. Now, is that consistent with the transaction that we looked at in Exhibit two twenty five? Correct. Okay. Next page, please. And again, now what's highlighted on this page eight, sir? The last four digits of the credit card utilized for the transaction. Again, does that match exhibit 225? Yes, it does. And whose credit card was that? Lynn Hernan. All right. And if we can just scroll through the rest of the exhibit, please. Detective, when you received these records, did you make contact with that FedEx location? Yes, I did. Why? I know there had been some time that passed, but I wanted to see if they would have any information or documentation regarding uh, the transaction or the pickup delivery, anything or even video related to that uh, pickup. When, were you, when did you ask them for that? Uh, shortly after we received uh, the notice or the invoice from uh, Brown Hills. Okay, and if we scroll back to page one of exhibit 199, detective, is there a date on the very top line in the middle of the screen? There is. Do you know what that date is? July 29th, 2021. That, but that's different from the purchase date, right? That's correct. What is that date? Object speculation. Um, overruled. I believe that date would be the date that the documentation was provided. Okay. Does that seem consistent with your memory in terms of when you received this document? Yes. And ultimately, were you able to get any information that was significant to you from the FedEx store? No, nothing from the FedEx store. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we learned that uh, the truth. Hearsay. Uh, sustained if the answer was going to be what someone told him, but he can. Why don't you rephrase? Is it fair to say that years elapsed between the transaction and you getting these records? Sustain. Detective, do you know why FedEx didn't have any video of who picked this firearm up? Yes. Why? Because of the time that it elapsed. Overruled, you may answer. Because the time that had elapsed, they did not have the video any longer. Okay. Now I'd like to go to Exhibit 173, which already has been entered into evidence, specifically slide 8. If we get unpublished, please. Thank you. Sorry, what exhibit? 173, slide 8. And if we could please publish that. Detective, the jury saw this with Detective Schrader already. Is that true? Yes. Okay, what is it? It is um, a clip from a cell hawk um, animation. On what date and time? This would have been August 21st, 2018, between 7.45 a.m. and 8 a.m. Whose records were used to create this image? Ms. Kraseski's. Why did you ask for this uh, map to be created? I wanted to see where uh, Ms. Krasowski, presumably the cell phone was uh, during the time that, of the call that was made regarding switching the shipping address to FedEx. And where was Ms. Krasowski's phone when that call occurred? Basically the city of West Dallas, um, 115th Street, north of uh, Greenfield <laughs> Avenue. Remind the jury, what is in the very center of those segments on the screen? Um, it's a cell phone tower, um, an asthma area. Okay. Can you tell, based on slide eight, how many different transactions are being mapped? Just uh, how many locations are being mapped? Sorry, what, how many calls or texts, how much data is being mapped on this screen? Just one right now. In the white box along the right side of the screen, do you know what those entries are for? 
uh, the activity on that cell phone during that time frame. <clears throat> okay, so there's more than just one thing mapped? There's more than one activity that was utilized for the system during that time frame of 7.45 to 8 a.m., yes. Okay. During your investigation, did you have to contact Brownell? I did, yes. Did you use a phone number for them? I did. What number was that? 1-800-741-0015. Uh, and remind the jury of the significance of the call on August 21st of 2018. That was to change the shipping location from Lynn Hernan's address to a pickup order that was going to be shipped to the FedEx facility in uh, the village of Pewaukee on, or when it, it was delivered. Okay. And we can take those down. Thank you, Madam Clerk. In the interview clip that the jury just saw, how many firearms does Ms. Krzyzewski say were purchased? I believe there was discussion of two. Okay. Did you try to follow up to determine if there really were two purchased? Yes. And did you find another record of a firearm purchase? Later on, yes, we did. Okay. Was that also at Brownell? No, it was not. Where was that purchase? Urban Arms Survival, LLC, I believe. Okay. I'd like to show just the witness exhibit 227, please. And detective, I'm gonna have Mr. Vulcanier scroll through these. Have you seen these records before? Yes, I have on page one of exhibit 227 what's being depicted a uh, certification of uh, business records okay if we go to page two what records is contained in exhibit 227 a bmo harris uh, mastercard belonging to who lynn hernan and what are the last four four zero seven five Detective, is this pages two through five a statement from that account? Yes, it is. <clears throat> I'd move exhibit 227 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 227 is received, permission to publish granted. Detective, if you recall when you were here during uh, Detective Plenis's testimony, was this 4075 account something that was presented to the jury in detail? Yes, it was. Are you sure? Not. I did miss a portion of that uh, testimony, so. Nonetheless, it, was this statement significant to you in your investigation? Yes, it was. Again, Lynn Hernan's name is on here. Yes, it is. Okay, if we could go to page three, please, and page four. Detective, is there anything significant to you on page four? Yes, there is. What's that? There was a purchase and a transaction made on September 27th of 2018 to Urban Arms, I'm sorry, Urban Survival Arms in the amount of $597. Okay, and if we can take this down, it may be easier for the jury to see. I'd like to show the witness exhibit 226. <coughs> Detective, do you recognize 226? Yes, I do. Is it a portion of exhibit 227? That's correct. I'd move it into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Did you say no objection? That's right. Okay, thank you, sorry. Um, exhibit 226 is received, permission to publish granted. Detective, could you please circle the account holder's name on slide one? Oops, sorry about that, okay. crossed out the name. And if we go to slide two, 
Could you circle that transaction that you just testified about? <coughs> Detective, did you try to contact Urban Survival Arms? Yes, I did. What In what ways? Uh, I tried to contact them via phone, via email. What is Urban Survival Arms? It is another uh, store that will sell um, unassembled firearms uh, over the Internet. What's the total value of the purchase on this BMO statement? $597. Now, were you ever able to get any documentation from Urban Survival Arms about this order? No, I was not. Do you know why? Uh, they would not honor any request. They would not contact us. It was, uh, we were received no cooperation whatsoever from that business. Is that business like a brick and mortar store in the area? No, it is not. What is it? It is uh, a business based out of California, uh, mostly dealing in uh, web purchases. Nonetheless, um, well, I don't think I asked you, what's the date of the purchase, sir? September 27th, 2018. And did you ask Detective Schrader to help you map that day? Yes, I did. Why? Again, I wanted to see where uh, Ms. Krzyzewski or her cell phone were during the time or during the date of this transaction. In the interview that the jury saw, what did Ms. Krzyzewski say about who was ordering these firearms? She stated that Ms. Hernan was the individual ordering the firearms. Did she say how Ms. Hernan was able to do that? She alleged it was utilizing her cell phone. Whose cell phone? Ms. Krzyzewski's. Okay. I'd like to now go back to Exhibit 173, slide 11. Detective, have you seen this before? Yes, I have. What is it? It is a snapshot of the Cellhawk animation for the location of Ms. Kurseski's cell phone on September 27th, 2018, between 1.58 p.m. and 2 p.m. When you tried to contact Urban Arms, what phone number did you use? 1-800-736-6598. Is that phone number depicted on slide 11 of exhibit 173? Yes, it is. Could you please put an arrow near it? Does that, does the information for that number indicate whether it was called or whether Ms. Krzyzewski received a call from it? That number was being called from Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone. Okay, and at the time of that call, where was Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone? Somewhere between the area of 92nd in Oklahoma, all the way south to Edgerton Avenue, which would have been a little bit west. So, um, Milwaukee, Greenfield area. Is that near Lynn Hernan's house? No, it is not. If we could go back to slide eight for a moment and we can clear the screen. Uh, similar question for you on this exhibit. Detective, is what's being depicted here <coughs> near Lynn Hernan's house? No, it is not. Whose house is it by? It is uh, in close proximity to Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig's residence at the time. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, Mr. Vulcan, you're going back to slide 11 briefly. Detective, in terms of this uh, number that you've associated with Urban Arms, uh, remind the jury what date this phone call was made? September 27th, 2018. Where was Lynn Hernan on September 27th of 2018? In Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Is that depicted on Exhibit 228? No, it is not. The cork board? 
The, I'm sorry, yes, that is <coughs> depicted on the cork board, yes. Okay. Um, is the map depicted in slide 11 near Waukesha Memorial Hospital? No, that is not. Okay. Thank you. Those are all the questions I have on these exhibits. Now, Detective, where we left off with Exhibit 205, um, that was an interview from July 12th of 2019. Is that right? Correct. And at that point, what did Ms. Kraszewski tell you about those firearms that we just talked about? That she had taken them apart and they were supposed to be in this storage shed. Did Ms. Kraszewski tell you whose storage shed they were in? Uh, just one that she was utilizing. Okay. Does that story change throughout the next interview? Yes, it does. All right, so moving ahead, I'd like to show the witness exhibit 206. We'll just need one moment for that to <laughs> Detective, do you see exhibit two oh six before you? Yes, I do. Do you recognize it? Yes. What is it? It's uh, clips of the interview conducted with Ms. Krzyzewski on two, July 16th, 2019. Is this a few days after the last interview that we saw in 205? Yes. Okay. Do you know why this interview on July 16th of 2019 was conducted? Uh, yes, I do. Why? We were attempting to uh, locate um, information or confirm information again through Ms. Krasowski after the request. Sorry, Detective, I skipped way ahead, didn't I? Did we finish the July 12th, 2019 interview in Exhibit 205? Not completely, no. Okay. So why don't we start there before we begin this one? Um, I believe we're on slide nine of Exhibit 205. My apologies. All right, Detective, please remind the jury of the date of this interview. Uh, we are back to July 12th, 2019. All right, and for the record, this begins at 1738.31. She also got up in the mornings and went and did her errands because she didn't like to see people. She stayed in her house a lot. Like, if you talked to her neighbors, she didn't, she wasn't out. Before that, she was the party of the whole block, but after things changed, like three years ago, I want to say is when she first developed these stomach issues and they just never ended. But that's the thing that, that, that's curious is yep. she was never diagnosed with any- Nothing. So why would she want to kill herself? Because they couldn't figure out what it was and she was tired of being sick. She didn't eat for months, months. And if she did, she got sick. It was either diarrhea or throwing up. She was to the point, I mean, this came from somebody who was healthy and did everything, went everywhere, to complete isolation, locked everyone out, locked everything out. Her whole appearance changed. I mean, it was still her, but it wasn't her. Um, she was so bloated. That was her biggest thing. And they always wanted her to do the one test she refused to do. Um, Something with your butt, and that's sound weird, yeah, but uh, because they couldn't find anything and they kept saying maybe it's like the other end and she refused. She didn't want to do it. And we're like, do you want to know why you're sick and they're not finding it? Go somewhere else or have something else checked or do it. I remember in the hospital, they tried again. I think they partially were able to do it or she just said, no, I can't remember. But she was, I mean, anybody who knew her, her neighbor told her, before I got her to go to the hospital, her neighbor said, you look like you're dead. You look like you're dead. And she said, I wish I was. 
but that was how she was. She just didn't care. She was done fighting. She was done. I think they just, she was mad because they weren't giving her answers. And to me, that didn't make sense because eventually somebody's going to find out something's wrong. I feel like, where they should have. But sure. I think a lot, of, I don't know how much you guys know about her medical records or if you had gotten. We got, we got, we got um, records, yeah. I know the last couple times they would never admit her. They used to think she was psychotic. She had um, something on her chart because she screamed about this. Um, they were saying something that she, something about her being psychotic and seeing somebody, and she wasn't ever. She never saw anybody that she recalls. So I don't know where that came from. And you would take her to the doctor. You were the yeah. one taking her to the doctor and. I mean, once in a while, I think Jean might have taken her, like, once or twice, or Judy, I mean, prior. You know, I wasn't always taking her at the beginning, because I couldn't always. And then she'd take herself sometimes, too. But I know some of them, like, she needed a ride, or she'd call, or whatever. Because I did talk to the doctors quite a bit. Because she'd tell them, oh, I'm eating, I'm doing this, and I'm like, no, she's not. I don't know why she's telling you that, but she's not. Or she tells she wasn't drinking. I'm like, yeah, she is. What did uh, you said that really bothered you about what Chris said yesterday? At the end, because he made, he said, you owe this to her. I feel like I don't owe this to her. She owes it to come out and say that I didn't do this. Or how that I she, how can she, she can't. I know she can't. But it made me feel like he. I, I felt I got a really bad read from him when he said that. Like I just didn't like the way that portrayed me. Because then I thought, well, now you're making me feel like I murdered her, and I didn't. I, I have a very strong conviction about that. I did not murder her, and I couldn't murder her. Um, I understand. I helped. I bought it. But in my mind, I she knew what she was drinking. She took it. I didn't force her to take it. I didn't pour it down her mouth. I didn't, none of that. And that's where I have a hard time. Well, I want you to think about real quick, so I'm going to step out for a second. Yeah. I want you to think about something. You said that Lynn can't do that. Can't do it. Can't tell us. Can't yeah. talk to us. I know. Actually, you're telling us she can. You're telling us that you have, we'll step up for a second. Oh, you're telling I us that you have proof that she did say that. So... You actually have it in your hands, Jesse, that you can prove that to us. Just think about that for a minute, okay? Moving to slide 10. Okay. And what did you think about this? I, I get what you're saying. I get it a lot. Right. Still, still status quo? Yeah. Still don't want to offer this proof that could help vindicate you? Not yet. Or at least prove that you were trying to help her and that you were doing what she wished? Not yet. Yeah, I don't understand how this looks, right, kid? I do. All right, Jesse. Can I, I ask you, what, um, so you were able to recover stuff from my phone. Did you find anything about that gun or any of the other companies? We're working on, I, we haven't had a chance to go through everything. I mean, you know, like Chris said, you got me wondering about the June thing. I'm like, really, like. Yeah, oh no, there's there's, there's, there's definitely that. poison searches in June of 2019. Yeah, I know. Was it for a particular poison? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Well, how about any poison? Why well, no, because I don't know, like, was it like a child, like, eating something? No, or, no, no. So that's why I'm no. trying to, like, check, so, you know, I'm like, I don't no. understand that. So I'm trying to think what it was. Okay. All right. Um, then I guess we're kind of done. I mean, I, 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 I I'm stressing. Well, I could sit here all night and talk to you, Jesse. I really could. I, I know. Can we just do this like every day? It gets me out for a little bit. <laughs> but I, I mean, we're we're kind of going round and round at this point. I mean, I, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt that that is what happened, but the, you need to figure something out and. Right now, you're basically saying you have evidence. Of and she out. didn't have any paperwork there besides, I mean, obviously, you guys showed me the one thing. But there was nothing laid around for anything. No. That's what I was curious and hoping maybe no. about. Sure, a suicide note would have been interesting. Yeah. No, no, no suicide note. No, I don't. So, that's it. We don't want to, you 
Are you still standing firm with this, huh? I mean, it's it's not that I'm not going to give it up. A, it's just, I just don't know right now. I just. Well, Jesse, I guess it's hard. It was, I know it's hard, but in the same aspect, I mean, your ass is on the line. Yeah. You, your future, this is your life. Yeah. Slide 11, please. The only thing, she wrote down what I know what she had. She wrote down um, information on um, when she first started getting sick. Wrote down how she was suicidal and she was asking for help, things like that. She wrote down something of that nature. I didn't read it, so I don't know the full extent she talked about it with me. Because she said, I'm doing this as, like, a liability, whatever. And then there was something about, um, she had something from, this was a while back, it was, like, a ledger uh, that she had, like, to, like, show stuff about money in case it was ever an issue. Um, those are the two things that I know she had, um, that she had done on her own, like, and that she put in a certain spot that has stayed there. The um, gun and the drops was something I did separately because I just felt, you know, if it ever came down to it, I have something that shows her handprints on something, obviously, and she was alive. You know, that was my thing. As far as what more, I don't know to an extent. Um, I know she had always talked about a tape. I don't know because I never saw it, so I don't know. Um, and then I feel like I'm missing something. I just don't know what it is right this second. Oh, I had some receipts. That's what I had. What receipts? They were from when she purchased the gun. And I had some other ones, and I don't know what exactly they were offhand. I don't know if I saved them from the Visine or something else. I don't know offhand, to be honest. But I know I had more than one thing. It wasn't just... Then the, the, what... The, the, what could, are you, is there something in that you think could lead to new charges? No, not at all. Then, then at absolutely, all. why in the world don't you want to say, here, help, this can help me, show it to us. Show us that, Do you want to know my biggest reason I'm saving it? I, I would love to, because I'm really curious right because now. Because I'd like it to give me out. Okay. That's what I'd like. Okay. Check her Bemis hairs. Her BMO Harris Bank. Okay. She has a black box. I thought you said this was a storage check. That's where she put her items. No. And this is a BMO Harris black box now. Correct. I didn't give any specifics for a reason. You said a storage check. I said it's not in my name. So in a lock box, BMO there Harris. is a, a gun. No. There is. Where's the gun? I said she has her stuff. And I have my stuff. Okay, so I here's the thing. Okay. Not? All right, so let's 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 clarify. I don't want to put everything out there because uh, I Jesse, don't. Jesse, you need to put it out I there know, now. Now is the time because your I... ass is on the line. Your you, ass is it. on the line. This is your slide twelve, please. The only. I get it, stuff. but I wanted to talk to somebody about it. That's why I didn't want to give too much information, because I feel like the more I give, the easier it is for you guys to figure it out. But it's not a game. So, I'm this telling is, you this right This now. isn't a game of I scratch your back, no, you scratch mine. No, I'm not saying that. But it, it, you are a little bit, because this is stuff that you're saying can help you. Yeah. It's time to bring it out. And it's, it's not a matter of us calling Julie saying, hey, do this. I'm telling so you right now, Jesse. The black box is the one that I'm most concerned about. The other one, I'm not too concerned, but you guys wouldn't find it without me. What do you mean you wouldn't find it without you? It's hidden. Doug, hidden. I thought you said it was a storage thing. Jesse. I, I never gave you specifics. You said, said it was a storage shed. You said a storage shed. You said a storage shed, not in my but name. Because I didn't want to give you all the information. Why? I, I told you I was holding it for a reason. That's why I'm holding it. It's sure. the one thing I got. This isn't a game. You I, know I, that, right? That's why this I'm isn't a game. This, right is, now. this is life. This is I'm real life. Right now. So go check both those. Go check the, the lock box? Yep. And what spot? It's her lock box in her name. And what about oh, the shit that you need? Harris is, it's the one on, um, I don't know if it's
it's walk sharpie walkie because I'm not real good with the. That's the one I'm most concerned with um, because we lost her key. We lost that a while ago. Um, it is on. I can see it, but I'm not silvering. No, that's one by your house. If you're, do you know where Eon Clinics is? I know it doesn't sound weird. I used to work there. That's why I can best describe it. What is it called? Parker and Blue Mound. Yeah. So if you take, I'm trying to like think of the right directions and not go directions. I go by parking things. So if you get off on Parker and Blue Mound and you come up, what's that first main road at the lights right now? Big intersection. Barker and Blue Mound. Yeah. I'm assuming it's Blue Mound, but I don't know 100%. And if you take that to your left all the way down, I think that turns into Pewaukee, doesn't it? There's a BMO Harris right there across from, like, car dealerships. Do you know where I'm talking about? I'm going to look it up real quick. So. There's um, another... Bank on the corner to SunTrust or so I don't know offhand. I just know there's a bank, but it's right by it's right where she bought her Jeep. There's a car dealership, like three of them right there or two maybe I don't know. That's where she always kept. So there's one over on Pewaukee Road. No, that's not it. I don't know for sure. I know like I'm just not good with. It's right across the street. And they just redid the intersection. I want to say you take Barker down and it turns. Like if you're on, or Blue Mound, I mean, sorry. I'm not good with directions, you guys. But I know exactly what you're talking about. But capital? What's around it, do you know? There's there's a, a, that park that's right there in the, in the car dealerships okay, there on the Capitol and Barker. Is the car dealership like across the street? From the bank? Yeah. Because the bank's like this way. You turn in right, and there's a car dealership in two so, of them left. Okay, so there's, there's Barker, there's Capitol Park, and then there's Banks right there. I think so. I'm almost positive. And what city is that one? That's I didn't know if it was that, Pewaukee, because it's like... That, like that, that's either going to be Pewaukee or technically at Brookfield. Okay. Then that should be it, because Brookfield is where I'm familiar, because she's had me meet her there like twice. Um... From when I used to work off the Barker Blue Mound. I, I know I've seen it, but I'm not good with streets. And what about the stuff you have, Jesse? Why, why wouldn't you want us to help you? I do want you to help me. I'm not. My thing is, is I, I want to get out. I need to talk to an attorney. But <laughs> that, and I, now, I now remember what you said. So I'm going to ask you again. No, no. Well, you you know, you're you're working. You, I'm you, here. Okay, but remember I, what you just said, though. Yeah. So are you invoking? I'm going to ask you. Are no, you invoking your rights? No. You understand what yeah, you're saying? I know. And I don't, I don't, I, know I do do not, I don't want to violate yeah. your rights, though, you're okay? <laughs> All right. I'm not you're saying, not invoking your rights. I'm not saying right the second. You want to speak to somebody about this yeah. uh, this issue? Yes. About the, about this, this, yeah. uh, the stuff you're saying there? Not so much the stuff. It's just the whole case. But I felt like this is all I had a leg to hang on to right now. That's, Good. you know but what I mean? Just to clarify, you're yeah. not invoking your no, rights right now. No, I'm not. So you don't want to tell us where you buried this stuff? No, I'll tell you. Where'd you bury it? <laughs> it's in Whitnell Park. Whitnell Park? That's where my bunny used to be buried. It's behind my mom's apartment. I know, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I didn't want to put it. I wanted, actually, my original plan was a storage. That's why I said storage. <laughs> because that's what I wanted to do, but I didn't want to pay for a storage. <laughs> but uh, I thought, well, I should be able to find it if I ever need it. <laughs> where in Whitnell Park? Other than so, where your bunny is. It, so if you were to take, you know where my mom lives, obviously. Did you go? There? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you keep going down, you know how that turns into Whitnell Park and there's that hill? Goes down. And there's that um, Wear Nature Center. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you here. Yep. Okay. And I mean, like I could literally. So there, there's Plum Tree Apartments, yep. right? There's your mom. Now there's Whitnell Park. Okay. So when you first hit, is this the beginning of Whitnell Park, the green? Yes. When you first hit that versus my mom's apartment, there's a hill and it goes down to um, the Wear Nature Center. It is literally ten feet behind the apartments at the beginning of the park. 
and it is in about 30 feet. So there's the apartments, right? Yep. Right here? Yep. Right they, there's a stop sign right there before you go down the hill, I believe. To, but it's to, literally... To the park? Yep. It's 10 minutes, or 10, like 10 feet into the park and 30 over to your right. So if you're coming in from my mom's and going into the park that way. So we're not going to go fully into the park. We like There's a stop sign right here? I think it's right there. It might be right before. I don't want to quote me. Okay. I, she just moved in these apartments. So basically, so, so basically, the plum tree it's park. It's literally is like ten feet into the park and thirty feet over on your right hand side. So it, you're pretty much in Whitnall back or in the apartments backyard, not hers, but those apartments. How deep is it buried? Um, I would say maybe five, four feet. Are there any markings? No. I had to put a stone on it, but I mean nothing other than that. What do you mean you had her put a stone on it? I had put a stone oh. on it. <laughs> Not her. Is it still there? She wasn't with me. I haven't. I've never went back. I've never had a reason to go back and tell this. When's I almost bunny? asked my mom today to do it, but I didn't. When's your bunny die? Oh my god, I was little. We lived in those apartments years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I picked that spot. Because <laughs> your mom just kind of moved back there recently. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We lived there when I was. Maybe four to six when she was remarried. Okay. And so, that's why I thought that's not to be so, honest, because so, my money's buried or was buried around there. So there's Highway 100. Yep. You make that left on the college. You yep. pass your own apartments. So like right there is the You don't the turn in her apartments. You just keep going yep. straight. But yep. so it would be on, it would be on the right hand side, Correct. right? So yep. we would get out and walk yep. to the right. Yep. Okay. And it's about. I mean, there's woods and stuff. It, does get muddy and swampy certain times of the year. It wasn't when I went. Um, I did this literally before she even passed. So, and it was all together in three Ziploc bags. Or is it in a box or anything? Nope. Or it's just three, three Ziploc three bags. Ziploc I just kept Ziploc bagging it and then the freezer bags. And how far down? I would say about four to five feet. Four to five feet? Yep. Are you Are you kidding me? Maybe four? I don't know. I guess... Four feet? Hold on. <laughs> you understand you just yeah. over four feet. Okay, like this. What is this? I'm not good Okay, with that, that made two? two feet. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. holy <laughs> shit, I got four feet. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, that's like my point. If you give me more of my body in there or something. I'm one of those people sometimes, like, I'm better, like, I have the road. I, like, I can tell you roads, but I can show you. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm fine. <laughs> I, I'm thinking digging-wise, okay, if you were to, like... <laughs> okay, then what's going to be in there, Jesse? What is going to be that in there? That is the two pieces of the gun. Okay. The rest of it was thrown in the garbage. Okay. There's some visine. Okay. And, and roughly, I'm going to say about 20 bottles, I would say with three different dates. I don't know the dates, though. Okay. Um, but I, I did it a few times. This was stuff I had collectively put together for a time in a Ziploc bag in my trunk under the tire for a while, or, like, under the mat. Okay. I, I was debating on what to do with it or where to go with it. I didn't want to get rid of everything. All right. And then there's receipts. Okay. Yep. And the last slide, 13, is about three minutes long. If we could play that, please. It's on the spot. Because <laughs> that's a big damn park. Uh, but I know the park very well. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so there's the Plum Tree, okay. there's College. This is the road, right? Yep, College. Yeah, yeah. sorry. So I'm going to say it's like 10 feet in. Wait. Or is it 30 feet, feet in or 10 Wait, feet? Wait, what did I say? Hold on. Wait, I got to let me do it. No. Because these, these are the tops of I the I know, apartment. that's what's throwing me off right now. I gotta look at it this way, even though I came from the other way. That's fine. I'm gonna say, like, and I'm guessing obviously feet wise, it's 10 feet from there, 30 feet from there. Guess okay. what? That's what I'm. Alright, so, I mean, is it like dir direct me in back of the yes. second, like, second apartment? Yes, yeah, like, like that, that right building there? back there, that main one. So that first building right there. Be, yeah, okay. No, I'm right. I had to, like, now I'm looking at backwards, so I'm getting to go off. Yes. My money is probably over there somewhere. <laughs> is this the building you lived in when no. you were little? No. No, actually, we lived way in the front, and my mom lives around 
here somewhere now. Okay. So I just grew up in this park. So there's one, two, three different things over there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, in, it's in the first, not this building, but the first one there. The first okay. section yeah. or the second building. It's got to be like the first or in between the first and second, but yes. Okay. Because they're not like huge like patios. Like, well, they are, but aren't, you know. All right, so we're going to go take and a look at things, Jesse. Three, literally like one Ziploc, another Ziploc, and another. Like all on top of each other in the same yes. hole? Yes. No, no, no. Wait. You no, have I a mean, hole. Yeah, I'd say no, each bag is inside of each other. Oh. Like I put oh. it in one, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, they're all in one, but I like triple bagged it. Okay. And then I wanted to tell you, too, about the people Harris account. So that paper you showed me the other day, um... The one that was signed by Lynn and me at Bimo Harris. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's when she put in papers in her lockbox that said, if you ever need these, that same day. Okay. And that's where, when she put in her stuff. So I know that for a fact. Um, when she passed away, I went there once with my mother. And all we took was the roll tube that she told us to take. It was in her list of directions when she passed away. And then there was still more stuff that we didn't touch. Okay. And then we lost the key, so we never went back. So and clear. me, Mom, and Anthony are all on the lockbox. Okay. So, but I wanted to tell you that because you were out of the room and I was okay. thinking of everything, so I didn't forget anything. Didn't I tell you something? Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. Okay. Um, what's that? Do you want me to take Yeah, are you okay? Yeah. I'll run her back up if you're going to. Yeah. No, what's the time? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Detective, did investigators go to Whitnell Park after this interview? Yes, we did. To try to find this burial site? Yes. Did they locate it? No. What types of things were purportedly in this hole in the ground? Gun parts, visine bottles. What did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you about why she would bury bottles of visine? That they were dated, possibly, I believe this might have been the part where she said there would be prints on them. They were the used bottles. Earlier in Exhibit 205, in this interview, where did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you that those items were? In a storage shed. Later on in the interview, does the defendant acknowledge that wasn't true? Yes. Do you remember what her demeanor was like when she told you that she lied about the storage shed? Yes. I mean, that what was it? We... we jury can see her demeanor for themselves. Sustain. Ultimately, did investigators find a lockbox at BMO Harris? Yes, we did. In fact, has the jury heard testimony about that already? Yes. How many lockboxes did Lynn Hernan have? One. Okay. The, I'd like to show exhibit 133, which has already been entered into evidence. If we could please go to slide nine. And if we could please publish. Detective, this is slide nine of exhibit 133. Have you seen that before? Yes. What is it? It is a safety deposit uh, access record for BMO Harris. In your review of these records, was this the last time anyone entered that box? No, I do not believe so. Okay. If we can um, start at page one, please. Sorry, slide one. Um, Detective, what are we looking at here in Exhibit 133? Uh, the certification of business records okay, from BMO so, Harris. And then slide two? 
Uh, this is the safety deposit box authorization form. Now, when you when investigators requested these materials from BMO Harris Bank, um, did it include all access records for the box? Yes. And are these the entirety of the records that the bank provided back? Yes. And going down to slide three and slide four. Detective, do you recall how many different people had access to this box? Yes. Is that kind of what the jury just saw on those slides? Yes. Okay. Next slide, please. And it, is this portion where the records change in, in type? Yes. What are these records? Uh, this is just a... Uh, this would be beyond his personal knowledge speculation. This exhibit's previously been received under 90611. I think this is cumulative. You can ask him questions, but um, we aren't going to go through this again. Well, I'd like to f go through all of these slides, please. So I just yeah, want you to you can argue with the jury later. But if he knows, he can answer. But otherwise, refresh his memory with it. Well, I can take the publish down. And Mr. Vulcanier, if you can please flip through these slides for Detective Hoppy. <clears throat> Detective, you've now seen Exhibit 133. Um, I'm going to ask you again, when is the last time that this box was entered? Again, object cumulative. He may answer this question. First of all, was your memory refreshed? Yes. All right, go ahead. You may answer. It was uh, last by anyone other than law enforcement, October 4th, 2018. And who is in there? Jesse Krasowski and Jennifer Flower. If we could please go to slide three. Detective, do you know whether this lockbox lock is still open today? No, it is not. Okay. Does that slide before you indicate when it was surrendered? Yes, it does. And when was that? I believe that's gonna be April 11th, 2019. Whose signature is next to that surrender date? Uh, Ms. Krasowski. And remind the jury what the date of the interview was that we just watched? July 12th, 2019. Thank you. Those are all the questions I have on Exhibit 133. Detective, is that the last time that you spoke with Ms. Krasowski in this case? No, it was not. Did you speak with her again on July 16th of 2019? Yes, we did. Do you know whether the BMO lockbox was checked between the last two interviews in this case? Yes, I believe it was. And what was inside of it? Uh, nothing but a clear stone. I'd like to show this witness exhibit 206, please. And detective, I asked you a few questions about this already, but do you recognize exhibit 206? Yes, I do. What is it? It is clips from the interview conducted with Ms. Krasowski on July 16th, 2019. Have you seen all the clips in exhibit 206 before? Yes, I have. Are they fair and accurate copies of the interview that was conducted on the 16th? Yes, they are. <clears throat> I'd move Exhibit 206 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 206 is received, permission to publish is granted. How uh, many clips do you have, or at least the cumulative time? An hour and seven minutes. 
All right, we'll start and then we'll break close to noon at a, an appropriate spot. Sure. Detective, the exhibit before you, is that the same exhibit 206 you just looked at? Yes, it is. And again, this is an interview from July 16th of 19? Yes. Okay. Uh, going down to slide two, please. Uh, do you recognize this still image? Yes, I do. It looks like a different room is being used in this interview. Yes. Do you know why that is? Uh, for technology purposes, we okay. switched to the uh, conference room. And what time of day is depicted in slide two? Uh, 1330 hours, which would be 1.30 p.m. Okay, I'd ask to play exhibit two, please. Go ahead. And you mean a slide two? Of yes. Thank you. Forwarded your mail. Thank you. You would pay it in the post office box. I forwarded my mail. Yeah, did you forward your mail to Scott's house? A while back, yeah. Yeah, but you still have stuff going to the post, post box, but not that. Okay. I'm talking about the BMO Harris box. Oh, the BMO, okay. Uh, BMO Harris, yeah, there's nothing in it. Nothing. Nothing. We had to get a warrant. And it took us, it was a debacle getting into that thing, but we got into it and there was nothing in there. Little stone, some fake stone, diamond, just I'm not saying fake fake, but just stone. So what do you think about that? Would they change the lockbox key yet? I don't know, we drilled the hole. They didn't they didn't say anything about changing the key or anything. Did they tell you last time anybody was there? Uh, we're still waiting to find out, but nobody's been there for months. Yeah. Last time me and mom went there was when she died. That was it, the day after. Okay. And nobody's been there since. That you know of? Yeah. And either you or your mom had the key? Uh, yeah. And I don't think Anthony has one, but he'd be the only other person on the lockbox, so... Okay. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a key. I'm almost positive. So who had keys? Um, Lynn had a key, and then I had a key. And what did you do with Lynn's key? We couldn't... Oh, I don't know. We never found it. Okay. I never found mine afterwards. That's why I contacted them, because I said I have to have the lock changed because I can't access it. And the last time I went there, I wrote a check, and they said they'd be in touch, and never went any further. And that was I don't know, March, April, maybe. So when you and Jennifer went there, mm -hmm. what was in there? What did you remember seeing again? We took out a roll. Um, that's what she had instructions of what we were supposed to take out, and it was a rolled up paper. And it just gave instructions what to do. And then she had more stuff in the back. And I knew from prior, because she said, that's what stays there if you ever need it. And what was it? I don't know exactly what it was. I know she had something marked down with stuff about money. She had some kind of statement she wrote when she first asked for help, stating if you ever got in trouble or if anything ever came out, it's there for you. And then she had, um, she said she had something on tape. I don't know. I never saw it, so I don't know. That's all I, I know. I don't know anything about a diamond or fake diamond, or I don't know anything about that. And this was the box in Lynn's name, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I've never had a, a safety deposit box ever. Okay. My PO box, I've had that for a long time. And what about the park? We went there. Couldn't find me in. It's a little bit bigger of an area than we thought. It's a whole thing for me. We went there that night. A bunch of us went. Do you have a better general description on where, I mean, I know you gave me your best, uh... I don't without, I mean, if I was there, I'd be able to help, and I know I can't go there, I'm not asking that. I just, I need, I need you to fucking help. Well, I don't have anything else to do. I just need your help. Where's the storage shed, Justin? I know there's a storage shed. There isn't, I swear to God, there's not a storage shed. I, I put that in everything. I just said that because I thought by saying that that would help me get out. I swear to you on everything, there's no storage shed. I put my life on it. In nobody's name, not in mine. I've never had one except for a long time ago. Detective, at the beginning of this clip, there was discussion of a P.O. box. Do you remember that? Yes. Did you investigate whether there was a 
po post office box significant in this case? Yes, we did. Was there one? Yes, there was. Whose was that? Ms. Kurczewski's. Did investigators check that box? Yes. Was there anything in it? No. Where was that located? I believe that one was in Hales Corners. <clears throat> Moving to slide three, please. Oh, you four. That's all I had was those two spots. And the one I didn't even have, that was hers. Now, what happened to your key for the deposit box? When me and mom went through that day, I don't know. We had so much stuff of lens, and it got, I don't know. We don't know. We never found it. Never found it. Even mom said the same thing. She kept asking me. I talked to the bank like four times. And I said, I don't, I can't find it. They said, well, just hang on until you empty out her condo and keep looking. I've looked everywhere. We can never find it. I've never been back. I swear to you. I mean, they'll know that. You'll know that when you look at the records. I can't find it. What, what, tell me again, what was in the bag that was buried? There was two pieces of the gun, not like full gun, just two pieces. There was some eye drops from, I want to say like two, maybe three times, just a few bottles each from different dates. And there was some receipts, that was it. And what were the receipts again? The receipts were for the gun, and I don't even know. I think I might have had, it was for the gun, I know that. And I don't know what else. There was other receipts that I saved. I don't know if I ever saved anything from them. I don't know. I really don't know. I know for sure there was a receipt from the gun. And I, I, I know I had these two spots, like the one Lynn had, and I did my own. And I always thought, I always have backup. I have something. I have something. And after you're telling me I have nothing, and that's all I have. <laughs> oh, I get to the kitchen. <laughs> I know. I need something good to do. Does your mom know about the stuff that was buried in the backyard or in the back in the woods right there? No. I told her briefly about the other day, but I wouldn't tell her where or anything. I just told her it's at the bar. That's all I said because I didn't want to tell her so she didn't create a problem. So she didn't go digging it up herself? No, I know she didn't. No, I'm just saying you didn't want her to, is that it? No, because I wanted you guys to find it. She was mad because she said she wanted to go with you guys, but that was it. She doesn't have any idea where. No. Why, why, why does she want to go with us? Because she just said, I feel comfortable if I'm with, so I can at least see what they find. Oh, it's not like we hide anything. I'm not saying you would. I, I didn't think that. That's why I didn't tell her. I didn't need more of a problem because she would create more of a problem. Like she always does with everything. <sighs> I'm just waiting to hear this all weekend, I thought for sure. <laughs> was it, were the metal, the, the gun parts, were they metal? Um, I don't know, they were black. You order it from the company. Do you remember what company? I know it's like you pulled out a computer and looked online. I'm sure I could figure out one of them, but I don't know if him, I don't know. I mean, I would assume it's metal. It was black. I know that. I I don't think it'd be plastic. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I can picture it. I can see it, but I don't know what it was made of. I know she had to actually do some filing on it and some stuff to it, but I want to say part of it had to be metal. Okay. And you bought that, or she bought that with, uh, or using your phone? My phone. And her credit card. Correct. Do you remember how many cards were being used uh, while she was alive, Jesse? How many? Yeah. On hand, maybe 12 to 14. Okay. Now, were you an authorized user on most of those accounts? I think so. I don't know. I mean, she always gave me permission to use them. Okay. I don't know that she added it on all of them. I don't. I honestly don't know. Okay. So when when you would do stuff or when you go to the store where you buy her stuff, no. would she just give you the card? No. So you didn't have like a second card in her name. No. So you were just using no. the original card. She would give me whatever one she wanted me to use, and she usually changed it up because 
Like I told you, she kept sticking on since she liked like, to switch things up. She didn't always use the same card for things. Oh, she, and she would have food stamps too? Yeah. Okay. Is that for the disability or was she, dis was she technically disabled? Slide four is 12 minutes long, so we could break or do one more. Let's watch one more. Okay. So when you walk in the park, do you know that we were talking about that same area that there's like a little nature trail right yep. there, right? Now, if I'm on college, you know, and I'm, and I'm walking, you know, like this is, let's say your mom's building is right here, okay? Yeah. And that this starts, this starts the, the preserve. Yeah. There's a trail right here. Where you bury it, is it on this side or this side? Is it on the right side? Yeah, yeah it'd be on the right side. Okay, on the right side. Yeah. Yeah, problem is, I mean, we've done as much as we could without making a total scene, but um, there were a lot of rocks, a lot of stuff that, you, you know, you said it was possible by a rock, yeah. but a lot of rocks. When I went there, there wasn't a lot of rocks. Okay. Go ahead. There was, like, bigger, bolder kind of rocks, and then there was obviously... I like remember smaller landscaping kind of style rocks. Yeah. So are you are you talking about the bigger boulder style no. or like a smaller no, rock? No, a thing? smaller rock I put on top. It was probably like maybe like my hand size. I mean, it wasn't huge. It was just. And then back there too, there's kind of like um, some decorative fencing areas mm -hmm. um, where the fences are just kind of like linked in lane. Is it by anything in specific? As, no. Because we, we did go off of the two yeah. buildings that you were telling us on, you know, that rough location yeah. on the map. Um, and, and there is, I mean, the whole area kind of looks the same. Yeah. There's I know, that's, that's it always did. It's been the same since I can remember. How far off that trail do you think it was? <laughs> Maybe a few feet. I mean, it wasn't anything extreme. So it was closer to the trail than it was to the apartments? I would say at most five feet off the trail. Yeah, I would think it would be closer to the trail than the apartments. Without looking. So the, those two buildings, I know when we talked on Friday, you were saying it would be like from the stop sign, you would go about 30 feet down and then maybe 10 feet yeah. back. So the two buildings that we were kind of working off of are significantly further right. than 30 feet in. Then it has to be the first building. I just know it was roughly about, I don't, I wasn't paying attention to the buildings. I was assuming looking at the map, but I know when I walked it, I know it was roughly, I would guess, 30 feet, no more. I mean, I didn't go huge in there, so I don't know if it was that first building then, the one that's off the map, I'm going by what I saw on the map. I know when I used to go in the park, I mean, I didn't pay attention to the buildings. I know the grass, you know, where the grass starts and where the, um, the mud starts. And I know plain as day, I used to always go through the same area, always. I mean, I've done this since I was a kid. And our bunny is buried like further in more the other direction, like the other side. And I just went right along the path and I went just over a little bit. That's exactly what I did. What time of day did you bury? This was middle of the day, I would say probably like, I'm guessing here, maybe like noon to two. And again, before or after she died? This was two weeks before she died, roughly, I mean. I'm not saying two weeks to the day, I don't. This is a, I know she was in the hospital when I did it. I know that. I 
And there, I mean, I, I give you my word on everything. There is no storage. There is none. I just said it because I thought by saying that, that give me some legway. There is no storage. I'm not, there's nothing to joke around about. There is no storage. I'm telling you. I mean, I'm at, at, at this is all I have left. I'm willing to give you anything if I have it. I don't have anything else. And I was so sure you'd get something from the box. I was sure of it. I can't take much more of this. I'm at the point where I'm telling you everything I can. I'm willing to do anything I can. I didn't do this. I didn't kill her. I did not kill her. You played a role, Jeff. All I did was buy it. That's all I did. I bought it. I bought it. And for that, I'm looking at murder. You gave her the box. It was the bottle she wanted. She knew what it was. So I did. did you. You knew, Jesse. You knew what it was. But she knew it. what it was. It was her doing. So what did you, though? So what did you? <laughs> but that doesn't make it right. Uh, on both ends, it doesn't make it right. Unintended consequences. I and mean, you know what you can't even say? It was unintended because you knew that uh, Lynn had looked it up and said that it could kill you. It could kill her. And you knew that. And you knew she said that, and you knew that had six bottles in there. And you were worried about it. You thought that what could possibly could have happened. And you know, I no keep laying back everything in my head, and you guys keep saying, I staged it. If I staged it, why didn't I take that bottle? Why didn't I take that bottle? I would have taken that bottle. And if you guys would have taken it, you would have known I never opened the bottle. Well, there's no prints of me opening that bottle. Well, your pranks be on it because you did it. You gave it to her. I know, but they'd be on the bottle, not opening it. I've never touched the top of it. You say that though, Jesse. You say if you if you did this, if you did that, I know, but, because but it, you didn't tell. They, it's one of those things. All you can do is go back and say, if I would have, if I would have. You can't. I can't change what happened. I can't go back. Trust me, if I could, I'd do a million things differently. A million. I wouldn't be sitting here right now at all. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, what more is there I can do? What more can I, I show you or try or give you because I'm there. I'm so there. I don't know. I don't know if we are there. I mean, we're trying. I know. But every day, do, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday through Friday, we got different stories, Jesse. I talked to you on Thursday and I told you the importance of telling us the truth and how the perception of what you tell us, how it looks later on, and then Friday you tell us all this other stuff that you didn't tell us before. I'm telling you right now, you, you right now, I, I don't know what to think. I want to know the truth. I want to know every detail. And I'm not <laughs> any sure way, there. Any way. I'm not doing it to try to prod her. I'm doing it to try to save my own ass. Is there any way, like, I could go to the park or I can see video while you're at the park and help point you to something, anything? I'm trying to hear. I'm trying so hard. This is my last week yeah. saving grace. We might, be able to, we might be able to try and figure something out. We might be able to try and figure something out. But in the meantime... I want to know every other detail that you think you've left out so far to us about this whole thing. From finances to credit cards to who's doing this and who's doing that, I want to know every single detail. Okay, ask what, me. What, if you have, what, what, do you, what do you think? What you, have you left out? What have you left out? You've been thinking about it. You've got no... I know, but I can't like think about. of... What I left out, I can't like think like that. Like, what do you mean? What did I leave out? I ask me and I'll tell you, but I don't know what you're what you're we'll getting. Who filled out the applications for loans in those last few months? For loans? Yeah. I'd fill them out with her next to me, right next to me. Okay. Why did you do that? But there was none towards the end that we did. The last of them that we did were, I want to say, like three months before she died. Yes, the last few months of her life. Well, I, I say why, why, why were they denied? Um, because of her income, because of how much she had out there, um, as far as what she already had, like debt wise, and the one for the house, I don't remember 
what they said on that one. I think it was income too, to be honest. And were anyone being denied because there were suspicious numbers or numbers used? Not that I know of. I know when me and her did like Wells Fargo, which was way before, um, they had something with the address maybe? I don't remember. It was something, I don't want to say numbers though, but it was something, they had said something else and they called and talked to her. I think it was fraudulent activity? Um, I don't know if they thought it, I honestly don't know offhand. That one was a while ago and we did so many afterward. Um, but they, they spoke to her directly, so I don't know. I think there may have been one or two that like questioned like who it was or so forth, but she always talked to anybody, always. Anytime there was an issue or they questioned something that I know of that she talked to them. When she got stuff in the mail, she'd call them back on it. I mean, because she did get stuff in the mail too. I intentionally was not taking any money from her without her giving it. I didn't take out any loans in her name, nothing. I, I can honestly say I did not do that. What about the one check where she writes out a significant amount, thousands of dollars to you, and says it's for the IRS for you? A lot of the checks that she wrote me, most of them, well, I should say at the very beginning, were to pay off creditors. She always put something in the memo line, and her reasoning was is because if anybody came back on it, we could say there's something there. Um, a lot of them, she basically, um, three of them that she wrote, we went shopping with, both of us. And she always said if she wrote it in her own name, it would do something with her, because um, she got money from the state and from Social Security and from her WIC. So she always, like, moved her money very carefully, like, especially from her money market to her checking and so forth. But I never took a dollar from her. I never wrote one check, I swear to God. I never wrote one check. I can say that quickly. You never I mean, signed her name? No. I mean, so, so, I can't, I, so a handwritten wait, expert? On, on a credit card? Yes, obviously, because she gave me permission. Um, but on an actual check, did I ever sign her name unless it was for a bill? No. Only for bills. And that was when I was right next to her in the hospital, she had me write out. Some of them we wrote and some we called. Um, but those were the only checks I ever wrote from her account. Ever. I can ask to God say she always wrote her checks. Up until literally when she was in the hospital, she had me write a few for bills. I didn't write one to myself, not one. I can I can say that without a doubt in my mind because I know I didn't. I've, I've never sold money from her, ever. I never had a reason to. She always gave it to me. Never. Detective, during this clip, <clears throat> there's a discussion of Whitnell Park. Do you remember that piece? Yes. When you went there with investigators, what did you have to go off of in terms of where you were looking? Uh, the information that Ms. Kurzeski, Ms. Kurzeski was telling us regarding and then a map that we had utilized the interview before. I'm sorry, a what? A map. Okay. There, Ms. Kurzeski in this clip mentions wanting to be able to go there virtually by video, right? She makes a comment towards that, yes. Is that something that your department facilitated in this case? Yes, it is. Okay. Those are all the questions I have on this clip. All right, this will be a good opportunity to take our lunch break. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you may not discuss this case, you may not do any research, don't review anything that you may see or hear uh, online on the radio or in print. Um, we'll take, uh, we'll come back at 1.15 for resumption of testimony. All rise for the jury, please.
All right, thank you. We're in recess.
Are we done testing? Are we good? Yes. Thank you. Did you put me back on? I did because I was trying to give Zoe um, access to sign dismissals, but the screen looks different or something. So we not said something. Oh, okay. Remind me and I can work on that yeah. later. All right, let's go back on the record then in state versus Jesse Kraszewski appearances are as they were before, and uh, we are back from the lunch break. Anything uh, the state wishes me to address at this moment? No, thank you. Anything from the defense? No, thank you. All right, we have Detective Hoppy back on the stand, and we'll have the jurors brought out. I think she'll be right back. She went, I saw her go into the room. Nice shoes. Thank you. It always seems like it's the hurry up and wait. It's a long walk, so to speak, down the hall. And it's extra long in this courtroom with the back hallway. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Detective Hoppy, do you acknowledge you remain under oath? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. Go ahead, you may continue. Thank you, Judge. Detective Hoppy, when we broke for lunch, uh, we had watched the first few slides of Exhibit 206, right? Yes. And <clears throat> What date was that interview? July 16th, 2019. Okay. The When we broke, there was I had asked you whether the Sheriff's Department tried to facilitate a video communication at Whitnell Park, remember? Yes. And did that happen? Yes, it did. In the remaining slides of Exhibit 206, um, in the interest of time, can you summarize what's being done during that portion of the interview? We had multiple detectives on scene at Whitnell Park 
I believe we had, I know it was at least one, possibly two metal detectors. So we were going through the area where Ms. Krzyzewski had uh, pointed to on a map and had best described the area where she had buried these items. Our detectives were combing through that area looking for any uh, freshly dug or disturbed dirt. Um, and then obviously utilizing the metal detectors, attempting to locate uh, the, uh, probably the gun pieces that we were specifically looking for. During this time, we had a live feed, uh, almost a FaceTime uh, feed over an iPad where we, uh, being myself, uh, Detective Schwartz and Ms. Krasowski were in the in, uh, conference room and detectives on scene were kind of giving us an idea of where they were at and we were trying to best have Ms. Krasowski explain uh, where this possibly could be. Was Ms. Krasowski giving live updates and information to those detectives at Whitnell Park? Yes, this was a live time feed, and uh, she was having access. It, she would have. She was. She had access to view what we were seeing on the iPad. Do you know how long detectives were at Whitnell Park that day? Hours. I couldn't tell you specifically, but it was uh, multiple hours. Was that the first time detectives went to Whitnell Park to look for these items? No, it was not. <laughs> when did they go before that? I believe that was either the day of the 12th or over the week, or possibly Monday the 15th. It was prior to the 16th, though. The first time that detectives went to Whitnell Park, was there a live communication between those individuals and Ms. Krzyzewski? There was not. But on the second visit, there was? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Is a large portion of the remainder of the interview actually have the lights dimmed? The majority does, yes. Why? Uh, so we could have a better view of what we were trying to see. Obviously, it, it was a, it's an older iPad, so it wasn't the best technology, um, but we were attempting to enhance the view a little bit so we could see what was going on. Did, were you able to see metal detectors being used during that search? I believe so, yes. Okay. In a clip that the jury saw already, you asked Ms. Krzyzewski whether the gun was metal. Do you remember that? I do. Um, do you remember what she said about that when you asked her? Um, initially or later on in the interview? Initially. Initially that it was, uh, she believed it was an all, all metal pieces. Did that change in the remainder of the interview? Yes, it did. How? When our detectives were out there with the metal detector, um, and at that at some point we did say that you know we obviously had not found anything and we were having no success, uh, Ms. Krzyzewski stated that uh, she now believed that parts of it was plastic. Did the metal detectors have any success in locating metal buried near that area in Whitnell Park? There were metal objects that were located, yes. Okay. Anything relevant to this case? No. Throughout the remaining about 40 minutes of that interview, is there any um, new information or different information that the jury has not already heard uh, in one of the previous interviews? No, I do not believe so. Okay. I'm going to move on then. Um, Detective, I want to ask you a few questions about handwriting. During your investigation, did your department receive any correspondence from Ms. Krzyzewski? Yes. Um, just one time or more than that? Multiple. Do you Did you become aware that uh, Ms. Krzyzewski was writing to many different people? Yes, we were aware. Did that include the district attorney's office? Yes. The medical examiner's office? Yes. State government entities? Yes. Do you know whether that also included the media? Yes. Did it? Yes, it did. Okay. <clears throat> At any point in time, 
throughout that letter writing campaign, did you reach out to um, the facility where Ms. Krzyzewski was? Yes, I did. And was that in April of 2020? Yes. Why did you reach out to them? There was information received that Ms. Krzyzewski had documents in her possession which would be valuable for the investigation. Has the jury already seen some of those documents? I believe so. Okay. Um, I would ask to please show the witness exhibit 56. And I'd also like to pull up exhibit 222. Six has been received previously, so go ahead. Detective, and I guess we can publish at this point. I'll be publishing Exhibit 56. Uh, do you recall these letters being shown to the jury already in this case? Yes. And these were actually entered into evidence by the defense. Is that true? Yes. Switching to Exhibit 222, please which is also already in evidence. Detective, what's the difference that you can see in page one between exhibit 56 and 222? Going back to 56? Going back to 56, please. And then 222? Obviously this uh, one has been filed. Okay. Is that the same probate case that the jury's already heard about? Yes. Okay. Do you know whether these letters were sent to individuals other than the probate case by Ms. Krzyzewski? No, they were not. Okay. Going to exhibit 56. Did you receive these letters during your investigation? Yes, we did. Where did you get them from? They were made at the, at the request that we made at the facility. Okay. Were they found in a location that was being used by Ms. Krzyzewski only? Yes. <clears throat> what do these letters purport to be? Uh, a look. Allegedly suicide letters um, written out to multiple different individuals or goodbye letters per se. Your Honor, to his interpretation of what the letters are, they speak for themselves. There's 27 pages. Well, then he can read from portions of them. Detective, why don't you take a look at page one and um, point out some information from it that you think would help the jury understand what the topics of these letters are. Based on this information, this again sounds like a goodbye letter. What does it say that makes you think that? Besides that, I worry about my cats. What will come of them? Please put them down and scatter them with my ashes. Going down to line five, I want to poison them with me, but I don't know if I will be able to, if they are still alive when you find me, or I couldn't do it. And where did you get this letter? Uh, from the lo location where Miss Krzyzewski was at the time. And she was residing there? Yes. Okay. I'd like to have Ms. DeVolcanier slowly scroll through the pages of Exhibit 56.
On page 19 of exhibit 56, detective, if we can scroll to the bottom, what is the date next to the signature? September 15th, 2018. Where was Lynn Hernan on September 15th of 2018? In Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Okay. We can keep scrolling through, please. I'll have the same question for you on the final page. September 16th, 2018. Where was Lynn Hernan on that day? Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Do you recall Detective um, Anthony Poza testifying at, during this trial about some letters that the defendant gave him? Yes, Mr. Poza testified. Okay. Do you know if these are the same letters that he saw? I do not believe so. Okay. And you received these in what month and year? I believe those were April, April of 2020. Okay, and then if we go back to Exhibit 222, can you please indicate what date that exhibit was filed on Exhibit 222? June 17th, 2020, 2020. I believe the last piece of our timeline in Exhibit 228 involves April. Can you please put the year uh, next to it and just indicate that you received these letters in that time frame, please? Thank you. Detective, the last piece of uh, information I'd like to chat with you about is more having to do with the downloads. So again, um, you, were you able to review Exhibit 168 in this case, which is Ms. Kraszewski's phone download? Yes. Were you also able to review Mr. Craig's phone download in Exhibit 170? Yes. Did you also get to look at the AT&T records that were obtained in Exhibit 172? Yes. Uh, I'd like to show the witness only, please, several exhibits, and I can list them off. Exhibit 168, 174, 175, 176, 177, Starting with Exhibit 168, I'd like... Oh, sorry, that's the, that's the download. Starting with 174, Detective, do you recognize 174? Yes, I do. And if we can scroll to the bottom of the page, do you know what this is? Yes, I do. What is it? It's uh, part of the, I believe this is going to be the, the timeline from the cell phone download, download from Ms. Uh, Krasowski. Does it look like a fair and accurate copy of that portion of the timeline? Yes, it does. Moving to 175. Detective, do you recognize this? Yes, I do. What is it? Uh, going to, it looks like it's going to be another uh, expert from the timeline belong, of the cell phone download belonging to 
Uh, Mr. Craig. Okay. Is this exhibit multiple pages? Yes. Have you seen it before? I have. Does it look like a fair and accurate copy of the portion of the timeline for Mr. Craig's phone? Yes, it does. Going to exhibit 176, please. Detective, what are we looking at here? These are uh, the down, I'm sorry, these are the cell phone records we obtained from AT&T in regards to uh, the cell phone records for Ms. Grzeski. How many pages is exhibit 176? Uh, 11. Now in this case, was AT&T able to give you some information about SMS messages? Yes, they were. Were they able to give you the content of the messages? No, they were not. What were they able to give you? Uh, obviously time, date, and uh, location data of the text message. Is Exhibit 176 uh, an accurate copy of the portion of those records for the defendant's phone in Exhibit 172? Yes, it is. And moving to 178, please. Detective, do you recognize 178? Yes, I do. What is it? I believe these are going to be uh, the call records uh, for Ms. Krzyzewski's uh, cell phone. Do they appear to be a fair and accurate copy of a portion of those records? Yes, they do. In terms of exhibits 174 through, I'm sorry. In terms of Exhibit 174, 175, 176, and 178, are all these exhibits focused around a certain period of time? Yes, they are. What time frame, date or time frame is that? Uh, basically the date of October 3rd, 2018. I would move Exhibits 174, 175, 176, and 178 <clears throat> into evidence. No objection. Exhibits 174, 175, 176, and 178 are all received. No. no. Detective, were you able to compare those different sources of information um, in this case? Yes, we were. And based on all of those different pieces of information, were you able to determine whether um, there were things missing from Ms. Kershevsky's download? Yes, we were. Was there? Yes, there were. I'd like to show you Exhibit 177 and ask if you recognize what that is. That is the demonstrative exhibit of the download and cell phone, uh, the cell phone download and or the time excerpt timeline along with some of the records that we received. Have you seen that exhibit before? I have. I'd move it into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 177 is received, permission to publish granted. Detective, is it fair to say that this is uh, some snippets of those other exhibits that we just talked about? Correct. Moving to slide two, please. Could you remind the jury what Exhibit 168 is again? Uh, the forensic uh, download belonging to Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone. Okay. There's two line items highlighted on, on slide two. Could you tell the jury why? Um, those were uh, pertinent as far as the time frame goes. Now, if you are looking at a timeline on a phone download, does it only show messaging? No, it does not. What does the timeline show? Timeline will show, usually show you everything from uh, call history, um, internet usage possibly, and then t uh, text message or uh, some downloads will even pick up uh, social media usage. Other than what's being shown right now, was there any more data on Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone from October 3rd of 2018 on the timeline? No, there's not. Okay. Any messages in the t this timeline portion between Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig? 
Not on this download, no. Okay. If we can go to slide three, please. Detective, can you explain to the jury what they're looking at here? This is a portion of the cell phone records obtained from AT&T. And specifically, this would be regarding SMS or text messages. <coughs> there are some words in red that have been put on slide three. Were those in the records? No, they were not. Okay. So why were those added on? Just for to make it a little more readable and understand uh, the originating and terminating and along with the time change. Okay. The two items that are highlighted, what's the date for those items? October 3rd, 2018. And the actual time in uh, Central Standard Time would have been 2.44 p.m. Now, page 2328 of this record that the jury is looking at, does that speak to calls and messages and voicemails, everything together? That's just strictly SMS. What is SMS? Text messaging. Okay. Is every entry on this page from October 3rd of 18? Yes, it is. And whose records are these? Ms. Krzyzewski's. Is, the, is this record consistent with slide two that we just looked at? No, it is not. Moving to slide four, please. Detective, what is the jury seeing here? This is a portion of the timeline taken from uh, the cell phone download of Mr. Craig's cell phone. From what day? October 3rd, 2018. What, who is the, uh, who's the other party involved in these messages? Ms. Krzyzewski. Did these messages appear on Ms. Krzyzewski's download timeline? No, they did not. Okay. You've reviewed a lot of phone downloads over time, is that true? Yes. Sometimes are you able to see deleted items? Yes. Are you always able to recover everything that's deleted? No. Specifically with Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone download, do you believe that all deleted items were recovered? No. Detective... When you reviewed Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone download, um, was this the only day that you recognized things missing from it? No, I do not believe so. Okay. In this case, was Jennifer Flowers' phone downloaded? Yes, it was. Were you able to review that? Yes. Was there material missing for large portions of time on that download? Yes. <clears throat> Were you able to review Scott Craig's phone download in this case? Yes. Did you see large portions of time that appeared to be missing from his download? No, we did not. Okay. I'd like to show just the witness exhibit 179, please. Detective, have you seen 179 before? I have. What is it? It is a demonstrative of uh, text communications uh, on October 3rd, 2018. Is this exhibit displaying multiple sources of data? Yes, it is. Does that include the phone download from Ms. Krzyzewski? Yes. Does it include the phone download of Mr. Craig? Yes. Does it include the call and message data from AT&T? Yes. Do you believe this is a fair and accurate representation of the communications that occurred on October 3rd, 2018 in this case? Yes, I do. I'd move exhibit 179 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 179 is received, permission to publish granted. Uh, 
Again, detective, is slide one giving some information for the jury about this exhibit? Yes. Moving to slide two, actually I can click it with this handy thing here. What, um, why are these three numbers included on the second slide? This shows you along with uh, the color of whose uh, number and information we're looking at in the upcoming frames. How did you know what Jennifer Flowers' phone number was? Through records and obviously uh, in our interviews. Okay. <laughs> Moving to the next slide. Um, Detective, I see on this slide <coughs> that there's one box that's not filled in at the top. What yeah. does that mean? That means that the message was deleted and uh, or that we don't have the content of that message. So how do you know that there was a message at that time? Through the records received from AT&T. Okay. There's three boxes toward the bottom that have white in them. Um, what, where is that information from? Uh, the, again, the AT&T cell records. The box is shaded in pink or blue. Where is that information coming from? From the download. Okay. So if you could please walk through this, it's not a very long <coughs> exhibit, and, it, and describe for the jury what they're looking at. What does this mean? On October 3rd of 2018, um, we obviously have an unknown content uh, text message from <coughs> Ms. Krzyzewski to uh, Ms. Flower. And then uh, there's no data until 11.52 when Ms. Krzyzewski sends Mr. Craig a message stating how's it going. Uh, Mr. Craig replies. We obviously uh, have a short reply, uh, and then a question from Ms. Ms. Krzyzewski to Mr. Craig, which we have that information, and then um, a call uh, at 12:06 p.m. from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts eight seconds. Um, at that point, we have uh, another unknown text message at 12:06 p.m. From Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, along with uh, two additional phone calls at 12.07 p.m. and 12.10 p.m., the first lasting three seconds and the second lasting six seconds. Is the text message content on this slide something that you were able to find in Ms. Krzyzewski's phone? No. Where did you get that from? Mr. Craig's. Okay. Moving to the next slide, we're on the same date. If you could walk through this slide, please. Again, another text message at 12.13 p.m. Uh, from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower with uh, known content. We have uh, exchange of messages, uh, which we've seen before from 12.37 through 107 uh, between Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig. And then at 1.09 p.m., uh, there's another outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Mr. Craig, which lasts 18 seconds. What about slide five? Uh, begins with a text message at 1.19 p.m. from Ms. Krzyzewski to Mr. Craig. And then at 1.37 p.m., there is an incoming message to Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone from Ms. Flowers. Again, with no content. A reply seconds after from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower. And then uh, less than two minutes later at 1.39 p.m., Ms. Flower responds to Ms. Krzyzewski, and at one, a few seconds later, Ms. Krzyzewski replies to Ms. Flower. Again, there will be no content on those four text messages. And then there's further exchanges between 2.16 p.m. and 2.17 p.m. between Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig. Slide six. At 2.17 p.m., there is an outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Mr. Craig, which lasts 20 seconds. And then seconds later, uh, there is a text message uh, exchange that begins at 2.17 p.m. Uh, between Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig, with the last uh, being sent from Mr. Craig to Ms. Krzyzewski at 3.01 p.m. Content is there. And then we have uh, at 10, I'm sorry, 3.03 p.m. And there's back-to-back -back calls from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, first lasting four seconds and the second call lasting 27 seconds. <clears throat> Detective, do you know when 
<coughs> in this case, the 911 call was made? Yes, I do. When was that? 4.55 p.m. Okay. Moving to slide seven. <coughs> Could you please walk through this, please? 4.51 p.m., <coughs> Ms. Krzyzewski, it's an outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, last five seconds. 4.52 p.m., there is a text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, again, with no content available. There are two uh, calls, one placed at 4.53 and 4.58 from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, both lasting three seconds. There are then three text messages sent at 4.59 p.m. from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, again, with no content available. At 5 p.m., there is another outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts five seconds. And then uh, shortly thereafter at 5 p.m. again, or after the call, there is an, a text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower with, once again, no content. Continuing. 5.09 p.m., there is a outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts seven seconds in duration. At 5.15 p.m., Mr. Craig uh, sends a message to Ms. Krzyzewski stating, call me. Uh, at 5.19 p.m., Ms. Krzyzewski replies to Mr. Scott stating, Lynn died, I can't talk. Mr. Craig then sends uh, four messages from 5.19 to 5.20. At 5.43 p.m., there is a text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, again with unknown content. And at 6 p.m., there is another outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, lasting six seconds in duration. On slide nine. 6 p.m., there's an outgoing text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower. At 6.04 p.m., there is an outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts three seconds in duration. At 6.04 p.m., there is another text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower. At 6.04 p.m., 6.06 p.m., and 6.11 p.m. and 6.15 p.m., there are four calls placed uh, by Ms. Krzyzewski. The first two at 6.04 and 6.06 .06 being to Ms. Flower. First one lasting three seconds. Second one had no duration. The third call that was placed at 6.11 p.m. was to Mr. Uh, Mr. Craig, which lasted 42 seconds in duration. And the last call, again, placed to Ms. Flower, lasting five seconds in duration. 6.23 p.m., there is another outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts four seconds. And then at 6.27 p.m., there is an incoming call from Ms. Flower to Ms. Krzyzewski lasting seven minutes and 14 seconds. At 6.44 p.m., there is a text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower. And then there are uh, a series of phone calls, uh, the first being at 7.20 from Ms. Krzyzewski, I'm sorry, Ms. Flo from Ms. Flower to Ms. Krzyzewski lasting two minutes and three seconds. And then from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower lasting two seconds which at 8.28 p.m., the next again at 8.28 p.m., from Ms. Flower to Ms. Krzyzewski lasting 44 seconds. Another one at 8.40 p.m. from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower lasting 11 minutes and 57 seconds. And another call at 8, which would have been at 8.12 p.m. from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower lasting 10 minutes and 51 seconds. Detective, with the information that has been reviewed in this exhibit, did you ask Detective Schrader to create an animation in this case? Yes, I did. Why? Again, I wanted to see the exact location uh, for Ms. Krzyzewski during the afternoon, morning and afternoon, along with the evening of October 3rd, 2018. If I could please publish exhibit 174, slide 13. Sorry, 173. <coughs> Detective, 
slide 13 was discussed with the jury by Detective Schrader. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Can you please remind them um, what it is that we're looking at in slide 13? Uh, this is going to be an animation of uh, the cell phone location for Miss Krzyzewski on the day of October 3rd, 2018. What's the time frame? 7.06 a.m. until 11.40 p.m. Along the right side of the exhibit, there's a column. Do you know what that is for? Yes, I do. What is it? That's um, just a time tracker. It basically shows uh, the time uh, as it goes all the way from starting at 7.06 to 11.40. So as the animation is playing, if it was paused, would you be able to see where we are on the timeline of the animation? Yes. Okay. There's a few pins on the map. Could you explain those, please? Yes. Uh, one is, it says, uh, Jesse K's residence, which would have been the residence uh, shared by Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig at the time. And then uh, directly below that is the residence, uh, it says Flowers residence, which would be the residence to uh, Ms. Krzyzewski's mother, Jennifer Flower. <laughs> And then in the upper left, you'll see Lynn's address along with, uh, it says death location, which was obviously the home address of Lynn Hernan. Is there already one call or message being mapped on this still image? Yes, there is. Could you circle that for the jury just to orient them? And what time is that transaction at? 7.06 a.m. In terms of um, geographic location, where is that transaction occurring or what tower is that transaction using? It's in close proximity to Ms. Krzyzewski's residence. Now, this animation wasn't shown to the jury with Detective Schrader, but Detective Hoppy, have you seen it before? I have. Um, does the phone activity move locations during this animation? Yes, it does. Okay. Is it always going to use that red shaded area for Ms. Krzyzewski's uh, device location? Yes. Okay. We can clear the screen, please. And um, at this time, I would ask to play the animation through.
you've seen that many times before. I have. Uh, the first activity that the jury saw is near what residence? Uh, Ms. Krzyzewski's residence. Okay. At around 7.52, does, is the phone using towers near someone else's residence? It's near Ms. Hernan's residence. Okay. Does that location change around 12 noon? Yes, it does. And ultimately, what towers are being utilized around 12 noon? Uh, it begins heading uh, southeast. Okay. Ultimately, um, does the phone activity pick up at Ms. Hernan's residence? Uh, much later in the afternoon, yes. Like what time? I believe the first one I saw was roughly around 4.35, maybe a few minutes, give or take. Okay. And the 911 call in this case was when? 4.55 p.m. Okay. At a point in time, does the map suggest that the device has moved away from Ms. Hernan's residence in the early evening? Joke to leaving. Overruled. Yes, it does. Okay. And does Ms. Krzyzewski's device ever use towers near Ms. Hernan's residence again the night of October 3rd? Yes, it does. Around what time is that? I believe, if I recall, it's like somewhere around 8 o'clock, maybe, again, give or take. It might have been a little bit earlier. Just one moment. We can unpublish this. Judge, at this time, I would move Exhibit 228 into evidence, which is the timeline on the court board. Exhibit 228 is received. And I would also move exhibits 188A and B into evidence. I believe that those were annotations that I never actually moved into evidence. That's true. They were seen by the jury, so they're received. That's all I have. Thank you. Well, let me see the attorneys at sidebar for a moment, please. Gentlemen of the jury, I know we haven't been on the record for a whole lot right now, but uh, given that the direct has just ended, I'm going to take our afternoon break earlier. It'll be a little bit longer. We're all going to come back um, at 2.30 to start the cross-exam. All rise for the jury, please. all the other ones we did but we'll go through that in a minute yep no that was it all right uh detective hoppy you can step down just want to put the sidebar you can all be seated real quick um i had pulled the attorneys at sidebar uh, because i did want to offer uh, to Attorney Kukler on the defense, the ability to uh, come back and start tomorrow morning. 
uh, but I didn't know if that would throw off witnesses that I know are uh, slated to be here. Um, and Attorney Kukler indicated that would throw off a little bit, but I'm, that's why I took the break, though, giving a little bit more time uh, coming back at uh, 2.30. Uh, I want this, I'm going to have you focus on your cross. I'm not going to go through that motion yet until probably the state actually rests. So we're in recess until 2.30, everyone.
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. We are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before. Detective Hoppy is walking back up. The exhibit is just taking longer than okay. I would expect. Let me know when it's ready. All right, thank you. Two in the afternoon? Yeah. Or two minutes and 36 minutes into the animation. So I believe the bottom is the counter, whereas the times on the right are the actual event times for either text or phone or any time that device is utilized. 6.30 p.m. then is what I'm looking for. Oh. I can't, it, it, because of the way that this is set up, I can just have to move on. I can't, I could pause it at that point, but I can't Got it. move it to that point. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I'm sorry, you said 6.30 what? PM. 6.30 p.m. Okay. 
if you want to stop. Okay. Thank you. Great. That's where you'd like it to be when it. Yes. When you please. start. Okay. Yes, thank you. Very well, Madam Clerk. You can have the jury brought out. that the jury box has it on by the time they're here. Sure. Watch, it'll take like five seconds. You can tell when the wall lights up. Good thing I did that. It's not on yet. There we go. Bless you. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. And Attorney Kukler, when you're ready, you may start your cross-exam. Thank, Thank you. Is this microphone working? Madam Clerk, can you hear me? Is this working? I thought I hit the on button. It's green on the top. Need a new battery pack? No. Oh, you charged it. Okay. Sir, you testified earlier that uh, you were tracing or tracking through Cellhawk. Uh, the department was tracking Ms. Krzyzewski's location at different times, right? It was mapped. Yes. It was mapped, and we have exhibit. Um, One seventy-three on the screen. You were talking about that one earlier. Is that right? Yes. And you see over on the right side of the screen, it shows the time, a particular time. In this case, uh, six thirty-one and forty-three p.m. Do you see that? Correct. And we heard earlier that when we see these these uh, marks that look like. Um, these two lines that come together, that this is spotting a location, right? General location, yes. All right. Uh, and you can see that when, at this particular time, uh, Jesse's cell phone is, is pinging at all sorts of different locations at the very same time, within a sec couple, few seconds of each other. Yes. And are you, that one can come down. It's my, uh, I'd like to um, show the witness only uh, an exhibit that I've just prepared. I'll show it to the state will be able to see it too. I'm gonna show you what I've marked as exhibit 617. Let me know if, if that, Madam Clerk, is, this screen is not, still has that other exhibit on it. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Can you see on October 3rd at 11.52 a.m.? We also have Jesse's phone pinging at Lynn's address location and at the same time somewhere near 
Milwaukee County. It looks like uh, the zoo. I would disagree with the location. I think we're further west. I think we're into Waukesha, as you can see. From 1152 north is Brookfield. East of that is Elm Grove. So we're well into Waukesha County at that point, it, appear, it would appear to me. Well, it would appear that, that Jesse is on, on I-94. True? The tower was over there, yes. And Jesse's pinging off a tower on I-94 south of Elm Grove, right? The cell phone mapping shows uh, that there was a tower utilized there or being utilized, yes. At the same time, she's pinging off a tower in Pewaukee. Correct. So really, as you, as you sit there now, you don't know where she was at 11.52 a.m. You, you don't know if she was at Lynn's home or if she was on the expressway on 94 south of Elm Grove, true? I would disagree with that. That exhibit can come down. Are you offering it? Oh, I'm sorry. Move for admission of Exhibit 617. Uh, received. Did you want to publish it? I did want to publish it. Go ahead. <clears throat> Looks like it's up on the jury box now letting the jury see that the phone is pinging off of two towers at the same time. Objection, that's a misstatement of what's being displayed. Sustained. Thank you, that particular... Well, I'm gonna just switch to another exhibit, or another page on the exhibit. Do you see this? October 3rd at 2.44 p.m.? Yes, I do. And do you see that Jesse's phone pinging off multiple towers at the same time? Objection, that's there. not what's depicted. I'm asking the witness if that's what he sees. Um, overruled, he may answer this question. They are not at the same time. Do you want this published when you do this? I would like it published. Go ahead. Do you see 242 and 244? Two minutes apart. Yes. Jesse's, Jesse's residence at 244 and I-94 with Greenfield on the right at 242. Yes. You can't drive that distance in two minutes, can you, sir? Some people probably could, but not the average person. Probably not. On slide three, do you see at two or six twenty-three uh, a ping near Jesse's residence on the right side of the screen? Yes. And also ping over on the left side of the screen on a uh, somewhere in Waukesha County. Yes. And at six twenty-seven, the phone is pinging somewhere near I forty-one near green heading towards greenfield south of uh miss krasowski's residence yes and at 627 at that same time pinning at south at hales corners at, at jennifer flower residence do you see that yes i do thank you i'm going to take this down you were talking about the length of of calls earlier this afternoon suggesting that there's all sorts I don't know what you were suggesting but you were pointing out that there's all these short duration messages between Jesse and her mother yes I was pointing out that there was attempt or contacts there I've never suggested anything and isn't it true that that short duration calls could actually be voice memos I'm sorry what was that isn't it true that something that shows a short duration could actually be a voice memo that somebody is sending back and forth between two people? A voice memo on I, our phones. I, I would disagree with that. Unless you're, I mean, voicemail is different, but if you're talking like a voice memo, I, I would disagree with that. 
You think voice memos are long? Not necessarily. Right. So short voice memos that you send to somebody would show up like those messages that you showed us today. I don't believe a voice memo. I guess I'm I'm trying to understand what you're saying. I'm are you are you talking about like leaving a voicemail no. or a voice memo? Then I w I would probably say it's not sent through a phone line. It's not sent a voice memo. I would disagree with it. Well, we heard testimony from another officer or detective earlier who said every transaction on the phone is memorialized, whether it's a, a, a voicemail, a phone call, a text message, an internet search. Those are all transactions. Every one of them is registered. Yes. Okay. So same with a voice memo. I would believe it would fall more under the SMS factor, but that would be my opinion. Isn't it true that when you send a voice memo that they automatically delete after the other person has played them? Lest you physically save them, they delete off our phones. I can honestly tell. I'm not familiar with the, the deletion of a voice memo. Okay. You talked earlier about different items on different searches being deleted on February 19th of 2019, right? Not searches, files, yes. Certain files were deleted on that day. Yes. Isn't it true that everything was deleted on that day? There was a certain group of files that were deleted, not everything. I'm not, I'd have to look back on it, but there were um, a certain number that were deleted, yes. You, you know that people sometimes sit down and decide to just finally delete things off of their phone, right? There's yes. nothing unusual about that. No. And some people delete things regularly off their phones. True? True. Some people don't save don't save text messages. You know that. Yes. Some people don't even save their call history on their phone. They delete that too. Some do. And it doesn't mean it's a for, for a nefarious reason necessarily, right? Some people just do that. Is it personal opinion? No, I'm not looking for personal opinion. You know that people delete things. Yes, I know people delete things, yes. Now, earlier, you were taught you you spent a lot of time playing uh, interviews with Jesse, right? You spent many days playing interviews of Jesse, reviewing them, yes. And you said things to her like right out of the gate that that there's all this tetrahydrazoline in Lynn, right? You talk, you or the other detective talked about. 60 times the you know amount 160 parts remember those all those kind of comments that were made by the other detective yes i'd never made those statements well, you never corrected that correct all right and so things were said like there's a boatload of visine in her right yes and it metabolizes in eight hours I don't recall the specific eight hours reference, but I do recall that there was talk about it metabolizing in the system, yes. And all of these things are actually not true, right? Parts of parts of those statements were inaccurate, yes. Because you, you've been here in court and you heard the medical examiner testify. Yes. And you heard Ms. Kachinko from the NMS labs testify. Yes. And they can't quantify these things. Correct. But you put that all in Jesse's head right out of the gate, that Lynn's got all of this visine in her, right? She had a significant amount of tetrahydrazoline in her system, yes. Giving these numbers and saying it's a boatload and 160 parts and all of these things that, that, it, meta that, met that it metabolizes, uh, the body metabolizes it quickly. Remember that kind of thing that all of that's not true. Correct. So you've, you put it in Jesse's mind. So she's now thinking, geez, I've got to tell you something, mm -hmm. come up with some kind of explanation for what you're tell what you're telling her is true when it's actually not true. Objection calls for speculation. Move to strike. Uh, just sustain it to the form of the question. It's compound. You're telling her things that aren't true and putting it in her head. You'd agree with that.
I would disagree. And you're saying things to her like, when Jesse would tell you things like, well, I'm, I would come back and the visine bottles would be empty, and in your, your comment, it doesn't match the science. But the, we heard the science. You didn't tell her the true science. Is that true? Thank you. Is that true? You Again, don't I would disagree. I would disagree with your statement. You you don't know the science, do you? Well, I know that significant portion of tetrahydrazoline shouldn't have been in our system. <coughs> now you 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 talked earlier about some letters. You brought up an exhibit of letters uh, that some, one, two, 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 two sets of the same letters. One that was admitted into, or was uh, filed in probate, and one copy that wasn't. Right? Correct. And the point that it seemed that you were making was that these letters, two of them that had dates on them, were dated during a time that Lynn was in the hospital. Is that right? You were asked that question by the state. She said, okay. was Lynn in the hospital? You said yes. On the one letter, yes. Both letters. Were they both letters? Okay. Yeah. Do you just agree with the state when they ask you questions? When the dates are correct, yes. Okay. So Lynn was in the hospital, right? On September 15th, yes. And the 28th. Yeah, she was, yes. Okay. Now, when somebody is in the hospital, there's nothing that would prevent Lynn from having her normal writing pad and writing things and writing letters while she's in the hospital. True? Probably true. And you heard, you were here when Corrine Posa testified, weren't you? Yes. And you heard Corrine <coughs> say, well, first of all, you don't have any reason to doubt things that Corrine Posa said, do you? Objection. Sustained. You heard her testify, true? Yes. And you heard Corrine tell this jury that Lynn was always writing things on her pads, changing her wills, writing new wills, and talking about it to her, Corrine. I don't remember the specific will part, but yeah, there was talk about writings, yes. And that she'd have them all over the place. Yes. Okay. So, it's nothing to say that Lynn wouldn't have also been doing those same kind of writings while she's laying in a hospital bed for two weeks. Fair? I guess that's a fair statement. Speaking of the hospital, I recall it was probably last week that you testified that there was no evidence oh, that Jesse had told you that she had brought medications of Lynn's directly to her at the hospital. Remember being asked about that by the district attorney? Yes. And do you remember then you saying that there was no, no indication that that ever happened? I did not recall seeing any of that, that information, correct? One minute while I find the exhibit. I'm going to bring up, uh, this has already been admitted into evidence, Exhibit 541. One minute, please. Okay. 
I-41, if you recall, sir, was the Pro Health Medical Records. You remember that, right? Yes. So you were asked about that by the state last week. You recalled that? Yes. Do you, do you see that on your screen? Not at the moment, no. Okay, we'll wait for that to come up. It was just for the parties. It is up now. Can you see that? I'll move down a little bit. Do you see? Um, yes. You recognize that? Okay, and I'm going to go to, before I make sure I get to the right page. Of course, it's not loading as quickly as I would like. One minute, please. Going to page 1073. Mm -hmm. no, I can't get it to load right now for some reason. Can you bring it up on yours? computers and bring it up. All right, do you see in front of you uh, page 1073, sir? Yes. And uh, I'd like to publish to the jury, Your Honor, this is already in evidence. Go ahead. I'll wait for it to come up. Okay, it's up. Do you see on uh, medic? Do you see patient belongings? Yes. Do you see uh, two bottles of uh, owned medications? <clears throat> patient owned medications sent to pharmacy for storage. Yes. And that happened on nine twenty two eighteen. Do you see that? Yes. And then do you see that they were returned? If you go down a little further. Please, Attorney Galvez, uh, that we see them return to the patient on the day she was discharged. Correct. So you stand corrected on indicating last week that no medications were ever, of the patients were ever um, there at the hospital. True? I don't stand corrected. I don't believe this falls under the same circumstances that was described in the interview. Well, Jesse told you that she brought medications to Lynn, you can take it down, uh, to the hospital, and you were asked if there was any indication in the record that, it, it, that the, farm, that the uh, hospital had taken those medications from her. You said there was none. I've showed it to you, right? Is that I true? That portion is true, yes. When you talked earlier about all the searches that were done on Jesse's phone back in the uh, time frame while Lynn was alive, you'd agree with me that all of these searches that you showed or talked about to the jury, there were no searches for Visine, true? True. There were no searches for tetrahydrazoline, true? True. And having searches, and there were a lot of searches that had uh, suggestions of suicide on them. Remember that? The files, yes. And that's consistent with what Jesse told you, that Lynn would use her phone to do searches, and that, that Lynn would use her phone to do searches. That's what Ms. Krzyzewski said, yes. And you saw on the searches that there were as I count at least three that had the word that were related to suicide. 
the files, yes. And it was well known that Lynn didn't have internet. Correct. But not only did Jesse do some searches for Lynn, you'd agree with me, wouldn't you, that her neighbor, Jean Tunnell, also helped her look up things on the computer? I never spoke with Ms. Tunnell. But you said that you're familiar with the whole record in this case. You've, you're the lead detective, so you've testified to things in the last four days that other people have done. Yes, but to say I'm familiar with every single record that came in this case, I, as you know, I, I, I think would be kind of difficult. You do know that Jean Tunnell would help Lynn look up things on her computer, don't you? Again, I know Ms. Tunnell would assist Ms. Hernan. I don't know specifically about internet usage. Taking the com over the computer, mine seems to be working again. I'm gonna show the witness only what is marked as exhibit 614. Can you see the document that's in front of you? Yes, I can. And this was a document that was in discovery in this case. And do you see that this is a, appears to be a, a PayPal account of some sort? I can honestly say I've, I've never seen this document before. I don't recall. Okay, well, I'll have you take a look at it then. Can we go down? Um, I'll go down. Sorry, I thought I've got control again. Have you just take a look at this? You see the Exhibit 614 sticker on it? Yes, I do. I think I've shown you. Is it right here? I'm showing you. Uh, It looks to be page three. This is a four-page exhibit, page three. Whose email is being used for this particular PayPal account? Uh, again, I'm not familiar with the PayPal records, so I have no question to doubt the validity of that it's a PayPal account, but the email account on this receipt or invoice uh, or record is Tanel, T A N E L, one two six three at wi.rr.com. And if I show you page, the, the page above that, page three, who is the principal's name on here? Lynn Hernan. With a P.O. box in Franklin, is that right? Correct. And that's uh, a P.O. box that Jesse would, uh, would use. Where's the, what's the phone number associated with this account? Two six two five six five eight nine five nine. That's not any of the numbers that you've been talking about, is it? No. Um, I move for admission of Exhibit Six Fourteen as to publish. Objection. There's no foundation for this. Witness testified he doesn't know what it is. I understand the objection. Um, sustain. <laughs> we could take this exhibit down for now. I'll move back to Kareen Poza. I asked you about Kareen Poza before. You did interview Kareen Poza, isn't that true? Yes, I did. You interviewed her on August 12th of 2019, isn't that true? Correct. And you uh, heard her testify in court, right? Yes. And I already asked you if it wasn't true that she testified that Lynn was always writing documents and wills. But isn't it true that when you interviewed her, so you heard her testify in court, 
that she didn't know anything about Lynn taking the fifty thousand, the supposed fifty thousand dollars out of her BMO safety deposit box, right? That's correct. That's what she said. Yes. That isn't what she told you in July of 2019, is it? That's correct. She told you that the money that Lynn had taken all the money out of that deposit box, and it was now somewhere in her house. Yes, yeah, she said Lynn told her that. Yes. And that Lynn wasn't great with money. Part portions, yes. Isn't so. Uh, she also. Um, t testified in court that she was very good friends with Kareem even as as late as the year that she died. She considered herself always a friend, a good friend of Lynn's, right? Yes. But isn't it true when she, uh, that when you interviewed her in 2019, that she, she told you she'd been friends with Lynn for over 30 years? Yes. They had been close until the last couple of years. Yes. She did say that Lynn had a heart of gold. Yes. But that she had a paranoia. Yes. Mental illness. I'm going to object at this point. I'm not sure what the relevance is. This is Dan Elsa. I believe it goes to the motion in limine previously ruled on number 19. So again, <laughs> what she told you back in 2019 is very different than what she told this jury in court in 2023 as to the money in the safety deposit box and her closeness with Lynn. True? True about the safety deposit box, yes. Well, she told you that as to the friendship that they were very close until the last couple of years. Yes. All right. What's a jailhouse snitch? It's somebody who is providing information uh, on another uh, individual who's in custody. You'd agree that you heard Ms. Sabaniak testify in court, didn't you? Yes, I did. She's a jailhouse snitch, right? I don't believe I've ever called her. That's not a, it's not a term I'm gonna describe her as. She was looking for a deal, right? Well, I will preface it with the fact that I was not there for Ms. Saboniak's interview, um, her original interview with detectives. Uh, I was only here for the uh, testimony in court. You saw the note she sent to your office, certainly. I saw pores. I can't specifically recall. I, I, I didn't deal with the interview. Like I said, I wasn't there for that portion. When you evaluate a jailhouse snitches statements is one of the things you evaluate whether or not they were housed together with the person that they're trying that they're going to snitch on when we receive information that somebody would like to speak with someone about an individual we yes we do a lot of our, our diligence in working with that checking out and verifying information make sure they were housed together right if there was information that they were alleging was directly from that person, yes, I think that would be part of it. Why, if, if, there's, if they're giving you information about another inmate that they supposedly got directly from them, why would it be important to verify um, whether or not they, were, they had access to each other? Well, if you're trying to figure out if they received that information one-on-one, -on -one, from another party, so you're trying to confirm where they would be, if there was any contact, if they'd have contact through programs or any other means. So how does how does that affect your decision on whether or not you're going to utilize them? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot more that goes into it. It's the information that was uh, stated, the information again, what we could verify. It's not. It's a case by case basis. There's not any 
it's, it's not just totally black and white. You got cameras in the jail, right? Jail has cameras, yes. And you can look to see whether or not uh, individuals are talking to one another. Yes. Or whether they're, do people share cells at uh, the jail? I know, boy, it's been a long time since I've been there uh, in our new facility and then using the older portion of the jail. No, there really shouldn't be, but I do know that some cells are opened up when there is overcrowding. So, but basically, no, I don't, I don't believe there's two ever two persons to a cell. And when they're opened up because of overcrowding, then people can really look at what other people have laying around, true? No, that's only uh, at night. It's utilized for uh, bathroom purposes, and it's usually monitored by the correction staff. Do they have TVs in the, in the pods, in the pods so that the uh, inmates can watch uh, the news, for example? Yes, they do. And, and some of the pods here are open pods. Uh, what's that mean when it's an open pod, sir? Uh, more of a dormitory style setting. Um, I believe we have uh, two pods for one for male, one for female that are in a dormitory style setting. So you could have anywhere. Uh, again, this is just a rough, I mean, 20 to 30 inmates. I'm not sure how the housing is or how it, it may have changed from my time in the jail, but there could be up to 20, 30 uh, individuals in one dormitory style setting. You talked at length one of the days that you were on the stand about Lynn Hernan's email account. Remember that? Yes. You'd agree, wouldn't you, that if you're going to, if Lynn is going to apply for credit online, if you're going to open up a charge or even apply for a loan online, you need an email address? Usually, yes. And so if somebody is going to help another person with those things, there would need to be an email address. Yes. And if somebody that you were helping with email, maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a good friend, if you're helping them and they die, there's nothing strange about at some point once you've closed your probate, shutting down the email, true? I would assume so. And if someone like Jesse is helping Lynn with her email, because you testified that Lynn didn't have any uh, internet access herself, right? Correct. She doesn't have Wi-Fi. Correct. Those would be the two ways you could access, if you had a phone that it could access internet or Wi-Fi, you could get on, you can get on the internet, right? Correct. And, and she didn't. So there would be nothing strange about Jesse accessing Lynn's email. In that scenario, true. The only, pretty much the only way that Lynn would be able to access anything would be uh, on Jesse's phone. Can you object to vague? I'm not sure what we're talking about. Well, sustained just as to the form of the question. When we're talking about 2018, when Jesse was uh, helping Lynn, wouldn't you agree that the only way Lynn could access her email would be at her home, that she could access her email at her home would be by using Jesse's phone? If Lynn was the one accessing that email, yes. Or Jesse could access it for her, true? True. And give the phone to her and let her look at whatever she wants to look at. True. And you've heard from people, you know from interviews in this case and so on, that Lynn liked to watch TV. She watched TV, yes. Nothing wrong with watching TV, watching a mystery, watching something and looking up information about that movie. For example, that TV show uh, on the internet, right? Are 
you asking in general or are you asking about Lynn specifically? In general, in general. No. What's wrong with unsubscribing to company emails? You suggested last week there was something weird about unsubscribe. What, what, what's, what's weird about that? That the email is even being accessed after Lynn has died. That there be any reason to unsubscribe. If you're going to close out the email account, just close out the account. You don't need to unsubscribe to anything, right? Well, one might not want to close the email account until you finish the probate of the estate, right? That's true. That could be the case. I guess we would probably disagree on that. Well, if you wanted to get information for the probate about bills uh, that have been paid or haven't been paid or uh, checks that have been written or haven't been written, you can only do that with that email account if it's for Lynn Hernan, right? Or if you could call and just say you're the personal representative for the estate and Lynn Hernan is deceased. Sure, but one other way of doing it would be by email. Right? Using an email, I'm sure, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I've never gone through the probate process. Okay. So you really don't have a lot of knowledge about the probate process? No, I don't. Most of my, my knowledge was learned through this investigation. All right. And one of the examples as you gave was Kohl's, Kohl's department store, that there was an unsubscribe or, or that there was an email with some kind of an offer. Is that right? Correct. And I was just wondering, why that's strange because Coles inundates my email every day and I've never asked them for one thing. Objection, move to strike. Uh, sustained. That is not a question. The jury will disregard the last statement by Attorney Kukler. Please rephrase. Do you ever hear about Coles department store sending out a lot of emails to people even when they're not requesting them? Yes. And if you're getting, if a person is tired of receiving those, one of the things you can do to stop it is unsubscribe at the bottom. True. Or you can delete the account. Yes, but I said it isn't it true. One way that you could stop the emails from coming is to unsubscribe. Correct. You suggested that there were some strange applications on Jesse's phone. Do you remember that testimony last week? Yes, I do. And one of the things you uh, meant, you spoke about, and I'd like to show this witness in exhibit, Madam Clerk, exhibit 612, which I do have an extra copy for the state. Can you see Exhibit 612? Yes. All right. Now, you said last week that one of, one of the suspicious applications on Jesse's phone was called Hidden Menu. Do you remember that? Yes. And you su su suggested that Hidden Menu was sus suspicious in some way, right? Yes. Did you know that actually it's an Android virus? It's also, again, there's also Hidden Menus. Did you know that it's an Android virus? I was unaware of this information right here. And did you know that if it gets on your phone, that it can direct you, and it does direct your phone to random sites? Okay. Do you see Exhibit 612? Yes, I do. Is that what this, can you take a look at it and see if you agree that that's what, in fact, hidden menu is, that it's what is called a malware? But this one is, yes. Well, that's the one. Hidden menu is what you talked about last week, right? Is this, did we see hidden menu malware? It was called hidden menu, sir. Okay. Okay. Did you research hidden menu? I am aware that there are hidden menus which allow you to hide information in different apps. I was unaware of the malware. Okay. Now you are? Uh, now I am. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Move to um, admit Exhibit 612 and publish. Objection. Can you <coughs> scroll down so I can see the full exhibit? Yes, Your Honor. 
two pages. Um, I'll overrule the objection, um, given that he answered questions about it before there being an objection. So you may, uh, exhibit 612 is received. I'd like to publish, please. Go ahead. You can, cross, you can redirect him on it later. Go ahead. I'm going to give Madam Clerk one copy. It's not in the box. I'll put another one in this box here. Thank you. I think it's published now? No, it yes, is. Here it is. And in fact, if you, uh, it's a bogus application that uh, Android users might find on their tablets and smartphones. Is that right? That's what this document says, yes. And then it, on page two, it tells you what a person can do to apparently remove it. Fair? Yeah. Yes, fair. All right. That can come down. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Oh, I don't want anything to be published right now. Even though uh, there was earlier testimony by law enforcement that there was no reason to believe that Lynn Hernan was receiving disability benefits or Quest cards, or um, I think those were the items that were mentioned, would you agree that now you have reason to believe that, that she was receiving Social Security disability? I have never seen the actual documentation stating as such, but there is a possibility she was, yes. And same with the food share card, true? Correct. You said that you've done, you do hundreds of electronic investigations, I think is what I heard you say last week. Not specifically electronic investigations, but let's face it, almost all investigations these days, there is going to be an electronic component, yes. Okay, so that was accurate. You've done hundreds. that Hundreds of cases that involve some electronic component. Is that what sure. you meant? Yes. You didn't do, you haven't done hundreds of actual electronic investigations. No, I don't think there's anything specific like, like that, but I'm just saying in general, most investigations are probably going to have some electronic com component, whether it's video, phones, downloads, something electronic, yes. Usually when you have a case, you, you, you gather people's phones. That's pretty common these days, isn't it? Yes, it is. And you, your, uh, your sheriff's department has the ability to access what's the information that's on people's phones yes we can download a cell phone yes and you can do that through programs that you have yes celebrate it's one of the programs yes and others yes and when you arrest somebody on a case and they've got a telephone there's, there's a, a few ways you could get into the phone. One would be if that person gives you their password. Correct. And you, you, and sometimes people will. Correct. Or they open it with looking at it because nowadays a lot of these phones seem to have a facial recognition, right? Yes. And then some people don't give them to you. That's correct as well. And then you might have to get a warrant. Yes. Then you have people like Jesse whose phones aren't even locked. Correct. Gee, you know, locking a phone, would you agree, is a way to keep out prying eyes? Yes. But hers wasn't locked. I don't believe so. Anyone could look at it, true? If it was unlocked, yes. I'm not 100% sure if it was, but if it was unlocked, yes. And she had just kind of a, uh, kind of a, 
cheap phone, a Cricket wireless phone, right? I don't recall specifically a type of phone. Would you agree that phones such as a Cricket wireless phone might not have much storage space on them? I would probably agree with that, yes. And so if you have a phone that's like that, you really your only option is to delete things so that you don't fill up with little storage you have. True? I guess you could say that. I'm, again, I'm not familiar with the phones, but I've never had a Cricket wireless phone. Yeah, but you've run into phones. You said you're doing hundreds of investigations with phones and downloads, so you know that. I don't. The storage and the data and which phones contain which is a little beyond my scope. It just seemed when you were testifying last week that you were very knowledgeable about those areas, but not really. You're asking me specifically about the storage data on a Cricut Wireless. I'm going to tell you that I'm not familiar with that. So that's what I'm trying to say. Jessie told you repeatedly throughout her interviews, did she not, that Lynn gave her permission to use the credit cards? Yes, she did. She never wavered from that? No, she did not. She said Lynn was either with her, right next to her when she was using a card, or gave her permission to use it. That's what she said, yes. And she told you that as to those loans, that she and the two that were introduced in evidence here, the attempt to get a loan at uh, uh, BMO, and then the actual loan that was received through Goldman Sachs but went into a Wells Fargo, that Lynn knew about those and participated in those applications, right? That's what she said, yes. <clears throat> and you could see in the documents themselves, uh, first of all, as to the one applied for BMO, that it was face-to-face -face in person. I believe it had to be taken there eventually at some point, yes. And as to the one that was actually approved through Goldman Sachs, you saw that on the day the funds were dispersed that, Lynn, or that Jesse added Lynn to her Wells Fargo account. I believe so, yes. So the loan gets approved. The money is going to be deposited into Jesse's Wells Fargo, right? Yes. And Jesse adds Lynn to the account, right? All on the same day. I believe so without having that in front of me, yes. You also heard testimony in here of the uh, loan application at, that was made at the First Bank, the, the um, BMO, where Lynn's actual amounts that were in her bank accounts back, this was applied for in, in March, February or March of 2018, that the, act, the, 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 the bank balances on the loan were very accurate. I don't recall specifically about the bank statements and the, uh, the accurate the numbers and the accuracy. Well, don't you remember the testimony? It was established here in court. A lot of financial testimony was talked about. But don't you think that's significant that in February, when Lynn's balance is going down and she's now, you know, well under twenty thousand dollars, that she knew it because it was on her application which was a face-to-face -face application. Isn't that significant to you as an investigator? The financial f crimes portion, yes. Yes, to the financial crimes portion, because isn't the suggestion that, that Jesse's taking money from Lynn and she doesn't know about it? Isn't that what the suggestion has been here? Yes, it is. But in fact, on the application, she knew exactly how much she had, because the number was Accurate. I would at this point. Um, overruled. He may answer, and he did his answer may stand. I, 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 I would I would disagree with your with your question. You disagree that the number on the app, the the dollar amount in Lynn's bank account was not the same. The dollar amount on the the loan application were 
requires that the, the applicant provide their balance, balances in the bank, that that number was accurate. It matched what Lynn actually had in the bank. That's not what you asked, though. Cumulative at this point. Uh, well, overruled, because I'm not sure he's actually answered. Um, and I think she's trying to clarify. And it's proper follow-up and proper cross. So go ahead. You can answer, if you remember the question. Yes, you asked me, what did that show that Lynn was present? That's where I strongly disagree. I'm not talking about the accuracy and the numbers. I'm telling you I don't recall specifically, but we'll disagree on whether Lynn was aware of that. Okay, I understand. So you're agreeing that, that the, 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 the accurate balances that were in her BMO bank accounts were accurately stated on the application? No, I don't recall that specifically. I don't, I can't <laughs> say that without it being right in front of me. I can't tell you that much. Again, I didn't handle the financial crimes portion of this investigation. Well, you testified that you're the lead detective on the case. As Detective Plenta stated, he was the lead detective on the financial investigation portion. I had minimal further follow-up in regards to the financial portion. That's why this was separated. That's why we discussed that. I'm going to show you, um, if I could publish just to the witness, well, actually to everybody, because this is already an evidence, Exhibit 566. Do you object to cumulative again? Overrule. I'm going to show you, sir, page 5. Let me know if you can see it. Yes, I can see it. All right. Is this published for the jury, too? Yes. It's on the okay. screen. Oh, I'm not sure it's in the box. We have thumbs up, so it is. All right. Do you see uh, on the application, would you agree that this is a copy of the application for uh, Lynn Hernan's loan with BMO? Yes. All right. And on page five, do you agree that uh, the balance that she's listed for her checking account is 15000 something? It's hard to read. Maybe $10. Yes, correct. Okay. And do you agree, I'm showing you page eight on the application at the bottom where I've circled, made a circle. Do you see the circle that I'm showing you? I do. Do you, this application uh, was done how? It appears that <laughs> The face-to-face -face circle is darker than the rest. Okay. So there's ways that the application could be made. It can be done by um, telephone or mail, but this is face-to-face, -face, right? It would appear so, yes. Okay. And we've already seen in the records that is just about exactly the amount of money that Lynn had in her bank account when this, sorry, let me go back to that last page there. When this application was made in February, of 2018, do you see the date? I see a date, yes. Okay. It's, it's hard to read. So, that can come down, thank you. Uh, I don't need anything published right now. So, that's fair to say that a face-to-face -face application with the right bank balance on it shows that Lynn knew how much was in her bank account. Objection to what this witness knew about what Lynn knew. Sustain. <clears throat> Just a, a, another unrelated sort of matter, but I want to clarify. Isn't it true that when you pick up something at FedEx that they require you to show a, a photo ID? I'm not 100% positive on FedEx policy. Okay. You said you went over there and you investigated FedEx and you were talking to them about this transaction. You didn't ask them if they require a photo ID? Based on my first question I asked them, it was kind of irrelevant. It was irrelevant because they didn't have any um, 
video any longer. And they had no information on the on the shipment itself. But why would it be irrelevant to know whether or not they require a photo ID so that you can then would if a photo ID is required, it would have to be Lynn Hernan coming to pick up uh, her item, right? I could have asked on it. Assumes facts, not in evidence. Sustained. Please rephrase. As an investigator in this matter, and trying to determine whether or not somebody picked up a package from Brunel at FedEx, that was part of your job, right? Yes. And you wanted to know, you went there because you were wanting to know whether or not Lynn, Jesse, or someone else picked up the Brownell package. Correct. Is that fair? Yes. And if you ask the simple question of whether or not the person who the package is addressed to needs to show a photo ID, you would have an answer to that, whether Lynn came or not, true? I would have an answer to my question. I heard you say last week when we were watching some videos on Exhibit 203, um, I think it was slide four if I recall correctly, that Jesse was told that the Sheriff's Department had IRS forensic accountants look, and look at this case. Remember that? Yes. There were no forensic, IRS forensic accountant that looked at this case. Detec sure. Detective Cole did speak with somebody from the IRS. Uh, how far, there was no, for, as far as I'm aware, there was no deep analysis. If there was, if the IRS forensic accountant looked at anything in this case, then there would be um, information in the discovery record about that, right? Of course. And there's none in there that you've seen, right? Correct. Okay. So that wasn't true. Correct. And when, during that same interview, you told Jesse, I think it was uh, also Exhibit 203, Slide 6, that there were a lot, you told her that as to the pills that were in Lynn, that they were less than the therapeutic levels. Remember that? Did I specifically say they were Detective Cole? Well, maybe Detective Cole. It was the two of you conducting the interview, right? Yes. One of you told them that, heard that, right? Yes, I do that, recall. That wasn't true. <clears throat> the specific levels, yes, correct. Because you were here for testimony where you know there's things in Lynn that weren't supposed to even be there because she wasn't take, supposed to be taking them anymore, to, anymore like baclofen. Cyclobenzapine, right? True? Correct. You saw where we pointed out levels that, that were toxic. No, I would, I would disagree with that statement, but I didn't say deadly, I said toxic. I was here for your discussion with levels, yes. With regard to these applications on Jesse's phone that you've also discussed, uh, and we've talked about the hidden menu one, and I wanna talk about a couple other things. You've got on the exhibit, I think it was 181, you uh, pointed out, for example, text free, burner free phone number. Remember those two, for example? Yes. Isn't it true that those applications allow someone to make calls and send texts over Wi Fi? Yes. And if someone's phone service is disconnected, for example, say your, your bill is, you're paying your bill late. Um, these apps allow a person to be able to still make calls and send texts from their phones over Wi-Fi for free. Isn't that true? Correct. And then those are not going to show on their actual cell number, right? 
That's correct. And so those particular communications wouldn't be reflected on AT&T certified records, true? Correct. <clears throat> and they wouldn't necessarily be in Jesse's phone text messages when it was forensically downloaded, true? Again, type of phone, but it's possible they would not be recovered, true. When you interviewed Jesse for the first time in July, I think it was July, well, not the first time, but her first July interview in July 9th of 2019, you remember that? Yes. You wanted to pin her down to the exact time that she was at Lynn's house, right? Yes. And you were suggesting in court through the showing of her testimony and then showing where her phone is at, at different times that that when she told you initially she was there a couple hours that that this is a lie I said it doesn't seem like an accurate statement but you're expecting somebody to remember back I don't know 10 months earlier right nine months ten months nine months earlier yes I'm I'm asking someone that question. And so it's perfectly reasonable that someone would say, well, I was there, wherever there is, for a few hours, but not be able to remember the precise exact time that they left somebody's home. Yes. Probably when you come back and you see, and you're shocked to find somebody dead, you probably remember that time more accurately than what happened in the morning. That's fair. And when you were interviewing her on July 9th, she was under arrest. She had cuffs on. Correct. That's the day that you did the search of, uh, of Scott Craig's home that she was sharing with Scott, right? Correct. And you heard him testify how it was very stressful to him. Correct. And that he described it as very chaotic and um, left a big mess at the house. His, in his words, yes. And you, to be fair, you were looking through everything, trying to find anything you could, right? Yes. So, of course, if a person has just been at home, the police have come in to execute a search warrant, she gets arrested, she's not going to be in the best state of mind to remember every detail the way you would like it. Am I right? Watching the interview, I thought her state of mind was fairly well, actually. Well, some people, when they're nervous or under, uh, under stress, do what we call a nervous laugh. <clears throat> okay. And she told you during that interview, well, I think I was there for a couple hours. I, I believe so. I don't remember exactly. She said those kinds of statements to you detectives over and over again. She's doing her best to remember. Objection what this witness knows about. Uh, sustained us to the last part of that. Um, you can ask a question. She was um, telling you thing, such statements as, I believe I was there a couple hours, right? Yes, she was. <clears throat> and is it fair to say as we watched that, that interview, you, you, you two were really hounding her, really hounding her to try to narrow things down and remember exact details and answer this and answer that, right? Objection, compound question. Sustained us to the form of the question. Would you agree that you were that you officers, detectives were really hounding her? I would disagree, especially with the verbiage. You'd agree that you're trying to get her to uh, narrow things down. Yes, that I would agree with.
And and one of the things that Jesse told you during that interview was that Lynn did have a problem with taking her prescriptions. She would take the wrong prescriptions. Yes. And you heard that from other people. Objection, move to strike. Sustain this in the form of the question. Did you learn that that was true? Ms. Krzyzewski Kers is the only individual that we talked to about that or that we got that information from. But you're familiar with, for example, the medical records. I remember the state bringing some medical records up and showing them to you. So you have some knowledge of the medical records, right? Yes. And you heard testimony in court about it. Yes. And you remember, don't you, that Lynn's primary care physician dropped her for having the wrong, uh, having drugs in her system that she wasn't supposed to have. Objection, cumulative relevance. Um, overruled, the state elicited testimony about this. This witness can answer. Yes. So you did have other information about that besides just Jesse. Objection, vague. Overruled. At the time of the interview, we have had that information from Ms. Krzyzewski. I'm not sure about the when we got the medical records, but we eventually learned that information, yes. And during that July 9th interview, you detectives told Jesse that you thought this was an assisted suicide. Do you remember that? Detective Cole made that statement, yes. And you'd agree on October 3rd, 2018, when you went to the scene and others went to the scene, that that was, you did think that it was a suicide? That was the information we had, yes. Well, that was your impression. I was there a very short time, but the information that I received when I got on scene was that this was more likely a suicide, yes. Yes, because if you thought it was something other than a suicide, you would have, you wouldn't have closed your, uh, you would have opened an investigation. Well, obviously, if there was other information learned at the time, yes, we would have done something different. Would have opened an investigation. If we had known information, hindsight being 2020. When you arrived, were the EMS folks already there putting the leads on Lynn? No, I think they had already left when I had, when I had arrived. Did you see the different leads that were on her, on the photographs? On the photographs, yes. I, don't, I didn't recall seeing them on the scene. And you heard the deputy medical examiner testify in court that she gathered all of the prescriptions that were at the house? Yes. You heard Anthony Poza testify in court that when he went there two days later, he saw prescription bottles? Yes. It doesn't jive, does it? It doesn't match. Do you think that Anthony Poza is maybe remembering prior visits and he's confused about uh, the couple of days after Lynn's death? I don't know. I, I have no understanding of why that is. And throughout these early interviews, when you're talking to Jesse, she was repeatedly saying to you, you the, the, whoever was interviewing her, that she didn't remember exact time frames, that she couldn't be precise about things because it had happened so long ago. True? True. That she was doing her best to help. Yes. When you went to the scene, did you see a lot of handwritten papers laying around? No, but I wasn't looking for them either. But you've seen in court the pictures that we that have been shown by both sides that show handwritten papers, right? Yes. So you know that that is accurate. That there are some found on scene, yes. And you also heard the testimony that there appeared to be some papers under the couch. 
I heard that testimony. There might have been some items under the couch, yes. And you or no, none of your detectives ever bothered to pull those papers out to look at them, true? I was unaware of them when I was there. I'm just saying, as you know the case, yes. nobody from your department ever pulled those papers out from under the couch. Objection assumes facts, not in evidence. Overruled. Not that I'm aware of, no. <coughs> and when you talked to Jesse, uh, she told you that, that, Lynn, that the papers that she had found uh, were on, some of the papers were under a couch, true? That's what she said, yes. And that's actually true because we heard testimony in court that papers were seen shoved under a couch. Right? I don't recall that testimony specifically. I remember there was, test there was talk about stuff under the couch, but papers specifically? Yes. You don't remember that? Don't recall offhand, but if there if there was, I have no reason to question you or doubt you. I'm just That's saying that I don't. It assumes facts, not in evidence. He's already answered, so his answer may stand. His answer is he didn't know. He doesn't know. Doesn't remember. And do you remember also saying in response to the district attorney's question about whether or not strike that there was testimony in in this case about <clears throat> about um, sorry I'm just trying to find an exhibit about um, whether or not the checks that were written to Jesse for a walker do you remember that uh, yes. testimony yes and I'm going to show you uh, fo photo uh, exhibit 608 did you say 608? 608. Thank you. And remember the testimony that, that there wasn't a sign of any walker at the home. Do you remember that? Don't recall specifically about there not being a walker at the home. I remember this uh, testimony about the check, but not specifically about it not being at the house. All right. Well, we can rely upon our memories for that. I'm showing you 608. Is this already in, uh, been admitted? Can I see your exhibit list? Okay. I don't then, believe uh, so. As you look at 608, is this uh, one of the scene photographs? It would appear so, yes. Okay. And so then, does it seem to be a true and accurate scene photograph, sir? Yes. Move for admission of 608. No objection. Exhibit 608 is received. We would like to publish. Granted. Do you see on the on the couch at Lynn's home the walker? Yes. I have to wait for it to come up on it. It's there. So, so in fact, there is a walker at Lynn's home on the date of her death. True? True. That can come down. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You know that through your investigation of this case that Lynn Hernan and Jennifer Flower were longtime friends. Yes. And you have no information, do you, that Jesse uh, and Lynn didn't visit, I'm sorry, that Jesse and Lynn didn't visit uh, Jennifer together on August 27th? You have some knowledge that they wouldn't have been together? Objection vague. Sustained us to the form of the question. Remember discussion in this case about some significant date of August 27th? Yes. And you remember the suggestion that <coughs> Jesse was with her mother on August 27th? Jennifer Flower. Okay, yes. yes. You don't have any personal knowledge that Lynn wasn't with them. True? It's 
I mean, I've actually having trouble recalling specifically what you're referring to, but I have no information saying Lynn was with them. Other than uh, some period of time, September 15th through September 28th, where you know Lynn was in a hospital, is it fair to say that you don't have any uh, chart or anything prepared that shows where Lynn was on particular days? Correct. Other than that time period when she's at Waukesha Memorial? Correct. Isn't it true that on October 3rd, 2018, when deputies, including yourself, were at Lynn Hernan's home that Jesse was standing outside of the residence visibly upset. I don't recall her demeanor. She was already speaking with deputies, I believe, when I arrived. Or I just completed, I don't recall seeing her demeanor. Do you recall on a different topic, switching subjects. Your department was interested in, in the many checks that Lynn Hernan wrote to Jesse. Fair? Yes. Because there were many checks written to Jesse. Yes. For small amounts and large amounts. Yes. And Jesse told you that Lynn gave her that money. She said she was aware of the everything she did, yes. And I heard some questioning when we've listened to these hours and hours of interviews of uh, suggesting to Jesse that, that she might have written these. We asked her, yes. Isn't it true that the defense wanted to have the checks analyzed at, at a lab to see who wrote them. Do you remember that? No, I do not. You know that happened. I know of what you're discussing, but I had no role in that. I knew nothing of what was being requested by the defense, nor of the expert. Okay. Let me ask you this. You're aware that in the end, the only agency that could evaluate the checks for handwriting was the FBI. That's who we asked, yes. And you asked the FBI to evaluate him, true? I did not. Again, I had no role in the FBI's handwriting analysis. I heard you say we. That's what we did. Did you mean your department? Our department, yes. Okay. So you're trying to separate yourself from the department? Objection, argument, move. Sustained. You're part of the department. Yes. You're the lead lead investigator. At the time, I was not actively working the investigation. You're aware that ultimately, checks and other documents were submitted to the FBI for analysis. I am aware that documents were sent. I have no specific knowledge on what documents were sent. Okay, that's fair. I'm not going to ask you. But you know that ultimately, documents were submitted. Yes. To the FBI and an, and an analysis was done. Correct. And you, you've seen the analysis, right? I have not. It hasn't been shared with you. It's not that it hasn't been shared with me. I just had no role in that, so I did not read the report. You're not curious as to what the results of the handwriting analysis are on all these checks that were written to Jesse? I knew it was being handled by Detective Planus. By who? Detective Planus, I believe, and the, was uh, part of that. And so in all this time and all these years that have gone by, you haven't looked at that at all? The handwriting analysis report? That's right. I don't think it's been years since we've had the report. I think it's been more like months. Okay, or a year maybe. Or a year. Uh, no, I have, not, I have not once looked at the report. And so you don't know what the results are? I do not, actually. It does, doesn't matter to you? I don't believe it doesn't matter to me. I know that the people that have the report 
are the ones who, or the people that need the report, have the report. That's what matters to me. And I guess when uh, the FBI comes in, you'll get to hear what the results are. Objection will be strike. Sustained. Jury will disregard the last statement. I'm just going to um, want to sh show an exhibit in a minute. Give me a minute. I know we took our break a little early. How's my jury doing? <coughs> okay, good. I got some thumbs up, so we're good. Keep going. All right, thank you. I'm going to bring up Exhibit 543, which is already in evidence. And I'm going to show you slide two. I would like to actually show everybody it's already in evidence if we could. I brought it up now, Madam Clerk, if we could share. You've seen this photo before. Yes, I have. And you can see the table to the right of Lynn. Can you not? Yes. And you see her water bottle there? I see a water bottle, yes. Standing upright? Yes. Do you see on the table to her left a bottle that looks to be eye drops? I see the bottle. Um, that is not like the, the other ones and the ones that we've already discussed here. Yes. Well, there's only one eye drop bottle that's been discovered in the photos since you've been sitting in court, right? I don't think we've ever confirmed for 100% accuracy that that's an eye drop bottle. Don't you remember Dr. B, uh, the, my showing Dr. B uh, a bottle of eye drops and she identifying that that is the bottle of eye drops that's at Lynn's home? Objection, that mistakes the testimony. Sustained. In any event, you see a bottle there. That's true. That's true. And you and you see a water bottle to her right, standing standing upright. True. 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 All right. Now, I would like to show you uh, in that pink photos. So if you bring up now, I should just stay on that page. Slide seven. Slide seven. Do you see slide seven? I do now, yes. Do you see now that I drop bottle? I see the same bottle we were just discussing. And now I am bringing up slide 11. There we go. Do you see the... the now that the water bottle is tipped over or it's tipping yes i do where it was standing up right before correct it seems that things are changing positions a little bit while photographs are being taken would you agree i would agree because there's 10 there's photo 10 is that the same spot is we're seeing photo 11. The bottle is now tipped over, yes. Thank you, that can come down. I don't know where you're at in your questioning, but uh, whenever you think it's a good point to stop, whether it's now or if you want to go for a little bit longer, I'm just not anticipating you'll be done uh, today, just given the length of his direct. Um, this wouldn't be a bad time because I'm moving to a different topic. All right, then let's uh, we'll break a little early today. I think we. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I will read the instruction. Um, please do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented 
and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communication. Do not use any electronic devices such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene, either in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other electronic application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in the case. Any information you obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this information is unfair because the parties would not have an opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device, including personal wearable electronics, applications, or tools with communication capabilities to share any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter, either in person, electronically, or by any other means. If anyone does so, despite your telling them not to, you should report that to me. I appreciate that it is tempting when you go home in the evening to discuss this case with another member of your household, but you may not do so. This case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in the courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence, and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After this trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout this trial. If any juror has reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. With that, thank you. You are excused for the day. I'll rise for the jury. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. I don't think we have anything else to go over today. I uh, state hasn't rested yet, so I'm not going to address that other motion. Um, Judge, I do you can have one, one thing. Okay. Um, oh, the door's not closed yet, actually. I just want to ask the court, uh, because I'm still in the middle of my cross-exam of this detective, that he not talk about his testimony with the state overnight while I'm in the middle of my cross-exam. I think that's fair. Any objection from the state? No. All right. Very well. So ordered. All right. Thank you, everyone. We are in recess for the day. Oh, yeah. Can we have 10 minutes with our client? Sure. Thank okay. you.